You're watching Fox 17 News This Morning, your code red station. Fox 17 and a code red weather alert for tonight into tomorrow. We're going to do it all again. What we had earlier in the week, the rain, wind gusts upwards of 50 miles per hour, and now a very small chance for severe weather. We're timing it in your forecast. And now on Fox 17 News this morning, huge changes in store for the University of Alabama as their legendary head football coach Nick Saban announced that he is retiring. Coming up, Democratic Representative Justin Jones claims that he was being silenced. He was voted out by House members. Coming up, find out why next. Thank you, Karen, and thank you for joining us here on Fox 17 News this morning. Just after 4 a.m. here on this Thursday morning, I'm Justin McFarland. Fox 17 News has gone cold red for you because of the threat of all kinds of different uh, types of weather. Just to be honest with you, uh, wind and extreme cold coming in. Let's get to Greg Bovis. He's got the very latest. We do, and this is uh, actually looking like more of a wind event than what we saw earlier in the week, and the timing is totally different. Rain returns tonight. We'll be actively tracking it 24 hours from right now as you wake up with us and it will persist throughout the entire morning. Then wind picks up late morning into the afternoon. That's our time frame to see wind gusts upwards of 50 to 55 miles per hour and a few small pockets could get even stronger than that. Damaging wind, same story as earlier in the week. Down power lines, power poles could be snapped and more damage to trees and property. Arctic blast next week. That's the secondary code red day. So we're going to worry about tonight and to tomorrow more and then begin to focus on Sunday into Monday as we make our way through our Thursday night and Friday. So code red, yeah, we have the arrow all the way over. We have two events that are both going to be code red. That one is the first one Friday with the wind and then Sunday into Monday. Arctic cold, very cold. We're still not locked down on snowfall totals, but this is likely going to be our first accumulating snow across most of Middle Tennessee. These are the two systems. This one is less of an impact, though we'll still obviously mess around with you getting out the door in the morning when it comes to the rain. The wind will knock your vehicle around during the afternoon, so it's not a zero impact, but it's just not as impactful as the snow and the cold that we will be monitoring going forward. Wind advisory. This came out around 2 o'clock in the morning, so brand new as you're waking up. This is for 6 a.m. tomorrow through midnight going into Saturday. Wind gusts, again, upwards of 55 miles per hour are possible. Look at the seven-day forecast. 57 today, 58 degrees tomorrow, 40 on Saturday. So we go from the upper 50s to the 20s within a four day time span. We go from 57 degrees to four degrees overnight in less than a week. Steer clear traffic out there for you this morning. Let's get started here at I-40 at Donaldson Pike out there near the airport. Traffic moving along just fine. No big issues out there in that direction. And we are certainly thankful uh, for that uh, because uh, we can know that we can always see some trouble spots, especially on Thursdays out there near the airport. But right now we're very calm. Uh, no big problems anywhere on the interstates. We are accident free, at least for right now. Uh, if there is anything that gets in your way, we'll be sure to let you know. Steer clear traffic live and local with you through nine. Well, shocking news for college football fans out there as Alabama's legendary head football coach Nick Saban is retiring. This news first reported by ESPN's Chris Lowe. Now Saban is considered by many to be the greatest college football coach of all time. And he's got the numbers to prove it. Nick Saban won seven national championships, six with Alabama, one with LSU. The 72-year-old will retire with 292 wins and 71 losses. He won the SEC championship 10 times and helped four different players win the Heisman Trophy. Alabama students gathered right at the statue of Nick Saban. Yes, they already have a statue up of Nick Saban even before he finished coaching uh, to mark the end of the era there at the school offering Nick Saban's trademark favorite oatmeal cream pies. That is something he liked a lot. Of course, the search is on for Alabama's next head football coach. A Democratic lawmaker has been ruled out of order on the House floor and is causing some controversy. And this is not the first time Fox 17 News Karen Aguilar is telling us exactly what is sparking the vote that is silencing Justin Jones this time. 
Good morning, Justin. I want to address some of the claims that Representative Justin Jones made. I want to give you an idea and show you what might have happened here on the first day of the legislative session. Uh, you can imagine that Representative Justin Jones was walking here with House Majority Leader William Lamberth, crossing the legislative plaza and into the Capitol, saying that he was not let into an elevator with, Ca with Speaker Cameron Sexton. He described these events on the House floor yesterday. Take a listen. I want to make clear that these rules are not about Democrats versus Republicans, but it's about each of us as members and a speaker who is drunk with power. Shortly after, lawmakers voted to have him silence one of the members, saying that he was making disparaging comments and was out of order. Moving forward, there is a new rule limiting time on lawmakers to potentially avoid disruptions. Reporting live in front of the Capitol, Karen Aguilar, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. Operation Crime and Justice this morning. One person was critically injured in a shooting that took place in Antioch. Happened around 7 o'clock last night on school house court. Police say there is no one in custody so far. We are working to find out more on this and we'll bring you updates as soon as we get them. State lawmakers protecting musicians. We'll tell you how next. And Fox 17 News is in a code red weather alert this morning, not for what's happening right now, but what is to come with very high winds and bitter cold right after that. Greg Bobas has got the details when we come back. Fox 17. 409 is the time in your community this morning. State leaders are stepping in to try and help protect the music industry from AI technology. Fox 17 News, Peyton Muse, live for us this morning outside of the Country Music Hall of Fame with more on what they're trying to do. Good morning, Peyton. Good morning, Justin. So from producers to songwriters, to even music engineers, some who have even walked through this building now, hopefully will get the protections that they need from AI technology. We saw what happened over the summer with SAG-AFTRA and state leaders are really pushing and doubling down to protect artists from something like that happening to them. Now, um, Governor Bill Lee and other state lawmakers, they um, and Senate Majority Leader Jack Johnson and House Majority Leader William Landberth are all banding together. Governor Bill Lee introduced a bill called the Ensuring Likeness, Voice and Image Security Act or the Elvis Act. And this bill will ensure that no one can rob the magic Tennessee artists create. Stand here in Music City. No robot, no AI creation, no program can come up with a new tune, a new thought, a new story, can come up with something that resonates in my soul. Now, state leaders say the hope is that other states across our nation will pick up on this, and Tennessee is the first state in the nation to enact this legislation. Now, producers, songwriters, some big names um, like Lainey Wilson showed up yesterday during this announcement that Governor Bill Lee and other state leaders uh, presented to people in the industry about this. And they are very excited, although they say this is a great thing that's happening. It's important to note the protections that's needed for these creators and from this uh, AI technology. Reporting live downtown, Pete Muse, Fox 17 News, Recorded Station. 411, we are to Fox 17 Code Red. Weather alert here for tonight into tomorrow. The next weather maker is going to be wind and rain. More so the wind. The rain only about a half of an inch, but it will come down very heavily and very quickly as we stack up those totals. All of today is going to be dry and mainly sunny through about 5 o'clock this evening. Temperatures in the 50s, so a really good day from sunrise until sunset. 11 o'clock, still not much happening on the radar, but after 3, 4 o'clock, we get some rain here, mainly west of I-65. The bulk of the rain begins to push in right around 7 o'clock and then pick up through 8 and 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. And those are typically some peak drive times for us here and the kids at the bus stop right around then as well. So keep that in mind. And these yellows and these oranges showing very quickly moving rain and also heavy downpours at times. Late morning into early afternoon, 
most likely chances you just saw right there to see not just heavier rainfall, but maybe even some thunderstorms that develop with this complex as it moves in. And then all the wind really does pick up later in the day. We're going to have wind gusts up to 55 miles per hour right in the middle of your afternoon for your Friday. Clear, clear traffic out there for you this morning at 412. Here's a quick look at I-24 near Highway 96 out there. Uh, this is in the uh, Murfreesboro area. And let me tell you, uh, this is an area where a few years ago there was nothing out here. This was a dark shot. Now they've built up and uh, put a lot of development out there. And now it's well lit and you can see things out there. Traffic moving along just fine. No big problems in either direction right now. We'll continue to keep you up to date. Well, coming up, a tense GOP debate as Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis battle for what looks like second place in Iowa. We're going to have a lot more on the critical moments from overnight. Plus, an avalanche in California leaves one person dead in chaos at a popular ski resort. We're going to tell you how the search for survivors took place. Fox 17 News. Coming up on 415, as you take a live look there across downtown Nashville, across the Cumberland River, into the uh, south and east part of town from our LNC Tower Cam. That is Nashville as we are under a code red weather alert. Greg Bobas is going to give us a lot more details about the strong wind and then bone chilling weather that is going to follow coming up here in just a few moments. Could have been a very pivotal night at the podium for presidential candidates overnight as they faced each other in the final debate before the primary voting gets underway. Fox 17 News' Scott Thurman uh, shows us exactly what it was that voters had on their mind as the uh, race shapes up in Iowa. Well, kind of a bizarre sight that a debate before any ballots have even been cast and it's already narrowed down to only three candidates who qualified and only two who are willing to show up. Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis squaring off and scrambling for any last minute Iowa support. An odd scenario just five days before ballots are cast. Do you believe Donald Trump has the character to be president again? I think he was the right president at the right time. I agree with a lot of his policies, but his way is not my way. I don't think that President Trump is the right president to go forward. He said he was going to build a wall and have Mexico pay for it. He did not deliver that. He said he was going to drain the swamp. He did not deliver that. He said he was going to hold Hillary accountable, and he let her, let her off the hook. An average of polls shows them trailing their collective target, Donald Trump, badly. The former president grabbing 51 percent of Republican Iowans, compared to 17 for DeSantis and 16 for Haley. <laughs> Meanwhile, Trump again trying to steal the spotlight with his own event at the exact same time, a town hall on Fox News. When you look at Ron's numbers, he's practically out of the race. He's also doing very poorly, as you know, in New Hampshire. I mean, really poorly. And I'm leading Biden in every single poll. And his debate absence forcing Haley and DeSantis to focus on each other and aim for what now seems to be second place. This is somebody that wrote in her book that Hillary Clinton inspired her to first run for office. I remember Hillary denigrating people on the Republican side as deplorables. We don't need a candidate who's going to look down on middle America. The reason that he spent and blown through $150 million and gone down in the polls is because he spent more time trying to lie about me than he is about telling the truth about himself. All of this kicking off the final stretch before Iowans caucus on Monday and possibly set the tone for the rest of the campaign. In Washington, I'm Scott Thuman. Other news this morning, there was an avalanche near Lake Tahoe, California, that swept up several people. And officials say at least one person has died and three others were hurt. Uh, this is a very sad day for my, for my team and, and uh, everyone here. Our hearts are out to the and condolences to the, to the victim to victim's family and certainly to everybody else involved in the incident. A lot of heartbreak there. A 66 year old man who was killed was a guest of the uh, Palisades Tahoe Ski Resort. The resort has shut down operations following the avalanche. Happened around 930 yesterday morning, leaving behind a very large field of debris 
10 feet deep. No others were reported missing. The avalanche comes ahead of a powerful storm, which is expected to drop about a foot of snow over Lake Tahoe later this morning. Greg, there is a wild uh, uh, sort of range of weather happening across the country. It, it's not just Lake Tahoe. It's the Northeast with flooding. It's uh, bitter cold in parts of the plains. It's everywhere. It's everywhere, and everyone's getting something different. Yeah. Uh, the far Pacific Northwest had blizzards yesterday. Yeah. Now the Great Lakes are seeing a bunch of snow. We had the severe weather down to the south earlier this yeah, week. Yeah. And now back home, we're going to do it again. The wind that we had earlier this week, that is our big weather story. We talked about it a few minutes ago. Wind gusts tomorrow of 55 miles per hour. Today, 57 seven degrees and sunny after sunset really after midnight the next weather maker moves in then this takes over half the country next week an arctic blast we're going to have tons of cold air filter in from canada everyone in the purple here will have temperatures that are in the single digits if not even colder places like minneapolis could have temperatures air temperatures as cold as 15 degrees below zero the timing is sunday into monday easily the coldest air of the season Single digit low is possible for us here. Now the first snowfall accumulation, it's looking very promising. However, the reason we've not given you any snowfall totals or posted anything on social media is the computer models, some of them have 48 hours ago projected up to a foot of snow. Those same computer models today are giving us an inch or two. We're far too out still to give you the confirmed forecast for snowfall accumulation. It's very tricky. It's very finicky. We will know tomorrow night really a good grasp going into late Sunday and Monday. But this is the timeline. You can see overnight Sunday into Monday, 8 a.m. This weather maker does begin to track in and it will continue to move through and bring in that cold air. We'll have three nights in a row of single digit temperatures for most of us here across Middle Tennessee. Keep that in mind. And you're going to see them right here on your seven day forecast. Yeah, that 13 degree low on Sunday, that's for Nashville. If you go to the north and west, you think Hoptown, Clarksville, you're going to likely be in the single digits easily. And then everyone will be Monday night and Tuesday night. Steer clear traffic out there for you this morning. Let's get over uh, to I-40 at 46th Avenue. That's over on the west side of town. As you can see, traffic moving along without issue. We're doing great out there so far this morning. Uh, the same can be said for other areas of town, uh, including this one. This is going to be 65 at Trinity on the north side. Doing just fine. No major crashes out there so far. We continue to watch the roads here. We'll let you know exactly what we find, and uh, we'll report that to you right here with Steer clear traffic live and local with you through 9. The former New Jersey governor, Chris Christie, is dropping out of the 2024 presidential race. Now, Chris Christie made that announcement yesterday during a stop in New Hampshire at a town hall. He was speaking about the decision and says he wants to be sure that he's not helping the former president, Donald Trump, who remains the front runner. And Chris Christie says he has no interest in helping the former president return to the White House by continuing to run. Well, coming up, the Tennessee Titans already reaching out for replacements for that guy, Mike Vrabel. We're going to tell you some of the people they're reaching out to. And the Nashville Predators taking on the Dallas Stars yet again. The second time in less than a week. We're going to tell you what you can expect from the big matchup down in Big D. Watch Fox 7. 424 is the time. Fox 17 News this morning is in a code red weather alert. You're taking a live look downtown Nashville on lower Broadway. Uh, you can see there the cranes are out. And listen, they need to get as much work as they can done right now because the bitter cold is coming. And I wonder how many cranes are going to be out there when the temperature is in five degrees next week. That's going to be the big question. Greg Bobas is going to tell us exactly when that's going to happen coming up here in just a few minutes. Before we get to that, got to tell you about the Tennessee Titans and their search for a brand new head coach. Now that they have fired Mike Vrabel, we've been talking about that for the last couple of days. They're looking for the next person to lead the team into their future. And Titans Wire is reporting that they've already reached out to several candidates. Now, the Titans have contacted at least six candidates so far, three on offense, Three on defense. That list includes the Las Vegas Raiders interim head coach, Antonio Pierce. That's according to the NFL Network's Ian Rappaport. 
Other names include the Lions offensive coordinator Ben Johnson, the Ravens defensive coordinator Mike McDonald, and the Cowboys defensive coordinator Dan Quinn. All of those gentlemen are participating in the NFL playoffs, so we'll see exactly how this shakes out in the next few weeks. Another opening to tell you about in the NFL, and that is coming out of Seattle. That is because Pete Carroll is out as the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. This is coming after 14 seasons at the helm of the franchise where Pete Carroll won two NFC championships and the only Super Bowl title in the Seahawks history. Now, the owner of the Seahawks, Jody Allen, says that the 72-year-old is moving into an advisory role with the organization. Listen to this, everyone. Pete Carroll reached the playoffs with the Seahawks 10 out of his 14 seasons in Seattle. It's really good. Okay. Let's talk about Tennessee sports and the Nashville Predators as they are headed down to Big D, Dallas, Texas, tomorrow night for their second matchup with the Dallas Stars in less than a week. On Saturday, uh, the Predators took home uh, a big win in Friday night's contest, 4-3. Uh, actually, it wasn't it the Stars who took home the win? 4-3 there in the big win uh, against them on, uh, on Friday night? No, it was the Predators. Predators got the win. They, the Predators have lost the last couple of games, though, uh, but they did beat the Stars last week. Uh, the contest will get started there with the Predators and the Stars coming up here on 7 o'clock Central Time. Preds play a lot of games. I'm sorry, I got it all crossed up. It's a long season. It's a, a long season. Parts. It's a lot of games. All right, so let's get to Greg Bobas. He's got a that we do, and the weekend kind of is that two-day period where we go from 50s on Friday to 20s on Monday. That is the swing of the temperature uh, game here for us here across Middle Tennessee. Dry Saturday, breezy, snow late on Sunday, and we're really talking about as late as maybe even 6, 7 o'clock before our first flakes start flying. Now, they're not going to necessarily be all night. They'll be on and off. We'll see more snow on Monday, pockets of it that do move through. Then the Arctic air moves in. Still too early to give you snowfall totals, but Sunday late in the day into Monday is when our chance for our first accumulation of the year is going to be. 70% chance that Nashville on north and west ends up seeing an inch or more of snow. And that'll be on the ground, and that'll be sticking because we'll have been cold for so long. Code Red Weather app, get it now. You're going to want it tomorrow. You can track the rain that moves in during the morning and afternoon. Heavy rain at some times. And then that incoming potential for snow and the big temperature drop off. You'll get our seven-day forecast and our hour-by-hour hour forecast right there when you're on the go. Just get all the winter gear ready for next week. You're going to definitely need it. Stay clear traffic for you. Let's go to the north side. This is going to be 65 at the uh, Fern Avenue overpass. No problems uh, so far out there this morning, but things will change. The traffic will build in coming up here a little bit later and things will be busy. But right now we're good to go as you hit the road. Coming up, a Democratic representative is voted to stop talking after it was said he was out of order. It's one of you're watching Fox 17 News this morning, your code red station. Code red weather tonight into tomorrow. Another round of rain and potentially damaging wind gusts up near 55 miles per hour. When we'll see the peak of our wind coming up in your forecast. Now on Fox 17 News this morning, police say two women were robbed at gunpoint by the driver of their Uber. We're going to tell you who police are looking for in this case. Plus, steer clear traffic there on the north side. No big problems as you get out the door this morning. We've got the very latest look at other sides of town coming up in the next few minutes. Just after 4.30 here on your Thursday morning. Thank you for joining us on Fox 17 News this morning. I'm Justin McFarland. We are in a code red weather alert this morning. That is because of the high winds and bitter cold that are going to invade the mid-state. Let's get over to Greg Bowles. He's got the very latest on your forecast. There is a lot that's going to happen here in the next four to five days, and there are two completely different weather makers that are going to keep us in code red for quite some time. Rain returns tonight and brings in wind up near 55 miles per hour right in the middle of your afternoon tomorrow. I think 11 o'clock through 2 p.m., the windiest hours right in the middle of the day for your Friday. That starts, though, with rain during the morning drive. So an inconvenient start, the wind picks up, and we could even see some 
thunderstorm activity late morning and early afternoon. Then we go to the Arctic blast next week, coldest air of the season. Everyone's going to get that and we could see our first snowfall accumulation of the year, but we're going to focus on the here and the now and what's going to happen in the next 24 to 36 hours. Wind is why we're code red this time, at least for right now. Wind advisory was issued at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning from 6 a.m. tomorrow until midnight tomorrow into Saturday. The wind could actually be stronger this time than it was Monday night into Tuesday. 55 mile per hour wind gusts, there's a 70% chance across Middle Tennessee that we see gusts that get that strong. And the average wind speed, that consistent wind speed, hour by hour, 25 to 35 miles per hour. And that's right in the middle of our daytime starting in the morning. What does wind advisory mean? Well, exactly what we just said, 25 to 35 mile per hour average wind speed and wind gusts of 40 to 57 miles per hour. There's a high wind warning in portions of East Tennessee thinking the upper elevations getting toward the Smokies, they're going to be even windier than us. So if maybe you're driving there for the weekend, keep that in mind. You're going to catch a lot of wind and it's going to be out of the southwest. So if you're driving east to west or west to east, it's going to jostle you a lot. We're going to look at the hour hour breakdown of that rain and then begin to dive into next week as well, coming up in the next few checks of your Code Red forecast. Clear, clear traffic out there for you this morning. Let's get a good look at what we are dealing with uh, there for you on I. 40 at the 2nd and 4th Avenue exit. As you can see, uh, traffic moving along there without any issue. We're doing just fine. We really are out there on the road so far for you this morning. Uh, no big problems north, south, east, or west. 24, 40, 65. Everybody in the clear so far this morning. Uh, we will start to see those backups, especially along I-24 coming up here over the next hour or so. But right now, no crashes to worry about. Well, new this morning, six people and six pets were able to escape an overnight house fire. This is in Springfield, and they were able to do so unharmed. That's according to Smokey Barn News as they are sharing these pictures with us. Look at the hole in the side of the house. Happened on Timberlake Drive around 10 o'clock last night. Smokey Barn News says that firefighters at the scene claimed that the fire broke out in the garage of the home, then spread into the kitchen. They say that the home is unavailable and just can't be lived in right now because of this fire and the smoke and water damage. We'll continue to try to look into exactly what caused this fire. A lawmaker had a vote to be silenced on the Tennessee House of Representatives floor and had a strong reaction from other lawmakers. And this is not the first time this has happened. Fox 17 News, Karen Aguilar, live at the state capitol where there has been lots of talk, lots of activity as of late. Yeah, Justin, there has been lots of talk, lots of activity, and the debacle with Representative Justin Jones, who was voted to be silenced, comes after lawmakers restricted people from getting into the galleries of the Capitol for the legislative session. And on Tuesday, people were inside the Capitol, outside the chambers, chanting with Representative Justin Pearson, asking not to be silenced. Now, there was a vote to shut down Representative Justin Jones, as I just mentioned. Jones got on the House floor yesterday and claimed on the first day of the legislative session, Speaker Cameron Sexton did not let him and Majority Leader William Lambert onto the elevator here at the Capitol. House members then voted to silence him. One member saying it was disparaging comments. A new House rule that silences members limits their time on the House floor. Fox 17 News spoke to two lawmakers makers who react any effort or rule to limit debate or limit who can even speak during debate is you know it's concerning i think it really defeats the purpose and the spirit of, of our democracy these rules are are fair they're reasonable and they're out there in the open for everyone to see and uh, some folks just rather ignore those rules just to disrupt and stop the democratic process both lawmakers agree that they want to avoid disruptions and just focus on making laws. Reporting live for the Capitol, Karen Aguilar, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. 
All right, Karen, thank you so much. Well, Metro Police are on the lookout for a rideshare driver who's accused of robbing two women at gunpoint. This happened early Sunday. Police say that it was 44-year-old Myron Hughes who was driving the women from Nashville to Nolansville when he showed the women a pistol and demanded that they leave their belongings in the car. That's according to police. Now, the investigation so far is showing that the car that Hughes was driving matched the information given by Uber, but the Uber information said that the driver was a woman. Hughes is charged with aggravated robbery. If you know where he is, you're asked to call the Nashville Crime Stoppers. Mus musicians getting support from the state. We'll tell you how coming up next. Fox 17 News continues on in our code red weather alert this morning. She took a live look there across the Cumberland River. We are expecting very strong winds and then bitter cold right after it. Greg Bobas has got the very latest on your forecast when we come back. Alerts empowers. 439 is the time. Welcome back to Fox 17 News this morning. Your community in your community this morning, state leaders are now stepping in to try and help protect the music industry from AI technology. Fox 17 News, Peyton Muse joins us live just outside of the Country Music Hall of Fame in downtown with more on what state lawmakers are trying to do. Good morning, Justin. So talented musicians, artists, engineers, even songwriters who've walked through this door now may have protections from the state when it comes to AI technology. We saw a little bit over the summer what uh, SAG-AFTRA artists were experiencing when it comes to AI and the state is stepping in to stop this from happening or worsening. Now, Governor Bill Lee, along with other state leaders, are introducing a bill called the Ensuring Like Voice and Image Security Act, or the Elvis Act. This bill will ensure that no one can rob the magic Tennessee artists create. Songwriters, producers, and artists showed up to thank leaders for acting on this so swiftly. When a machine is able to take something and uh, from someone's lifetime experience and recreate it without permission or take someone's voice and use it without permission. Uh, let's just call it what it is. It's wrong. It's theft. Now that was Jamie Moore, a songwriter and producer, and state leaders say the hope is that other states across the nation will pick up on this. Nashville is the heart of music, and it generates billions of dollars for Tennessee's economy, and Tennessee is the first state to actually enact this bill. They're the first ones ever to write something to protect creators. Reporting live downtown, Peyton Muse, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. 441 and we are back in the code red weather alert for the same reason we were earlier in the week. Another round of some damaging wind possible going into tomorrow. That is our next weather maker. Let's take a look at the timing of not just wind, but also rain that will move into the area. This is four o'clock today, this morning into the afternoon. Nothing to worry about. We have plenty of sunshine on tap until late today. Overnight clouds begin to build. This is 11 p.m. And then after three o'clock in the morning, a few showers begin to creep in. Not heavy rain at that point. However, seven o'clock, more and more rain begins to develop from west to east on the radar and the bulk of it moves through between 7 o'clock and 9 a.m. and then continues to pull through through 11, 12, and 1 o'clock into the afternoon. That's the time frame when the wind really is going to be gusty. I would say 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, the gusts up near 50 miles per hour right near the Nashville metro area, and then near 55 miles per hour out toward the Cumberland Plateau a few hours later into the early afternoon. After that, things do get very cold very quickly into the upcoming weekend. So the high wind, all the brown you see right here, that is the, well, that's the bulk of the, of the wind coming through. The closer that these arrows get or the, these lines get together, the stronger the wind. This is late morning into early afternoon tomorrow. Keep that in mind as you're waking up. Rain to start, wind by lunchtime. Clear traffic at 443. Take a quick look here at I-40 at Whitebridge Road. As you can see, traffic moving along without issue. We're doing okay. A few trucks over there. Shh, they're sleeping. Over on the shoulder of the road, uh, around five or six of them out there this morning, uh, but nothing out of the ordinary. We're good to go north, south, east, and west this morning. We'll continue to follow things out there on the roads.
Well, coming up, TSA telling flyers just how many guns they confiscated from travelers at Nashville's airport is pretty high on the list. We're going to tell you just how many guns were taken. And a Tennessee marching band has won a big performance and some major recognition. We're going to tell you how they challenged, uh, challenged uh, Metallica's rock songs in the next few minutes. Welcome back to Fox 17 News this morning. Live look there across downtown Nashville. As you can see, uh, we are doing uh, okay as far as your weather is concerned right now, but we are in a code red weather alert this morning because of the possibility of high wind and cold, cold temperatures. Greg Bobas will get the details to us coming up in the next few minutes. But first, 2023 and airport security was a very, very busy year. Uh, security agents were able to confiscate more than 6,700 guns at checkpoints across the country. Now, this is a brand new record for the TSA. It's about two more guns than what they found last year. The TSA says 93% of those guns were loaded. Most of the guns were coming from southern states with the airports located. Now, at the top of the list was Atlanta International Airport. They had 451 firearms confiscated there. But coming in at fifth place was Nashville's own BNA. 188 guns confiscated there last year. The technology of the future could be in Las Vegas right now. Inventors are showcasing the latest robotic developments at this year's CES events. Fox News, Ted Linder takes a closer look. It's a dream come true for tech lovers nationwide. <laughs> As tens of thousands flood Las Vegas this week for CES 2024, formerly known as the Consumer Electronics Show. The problem is not being able to see everything here. Every, every year I come, I only see 20% and I'm here for the entire time. And many of the inventions on display are armed with powerful artificial intelligence. Like this dashboard on the new concept electric vehicle from Mercedes-Benz. The auto company also unveiling its new virtual assistant that can speak in different emotions and ask the driver questions to provide the best responses to their commands. It's there to create a more empathic and intuitive way to communicate with your vehicle. On the other hand, if your home needs an AI upgrade, Samsung is showing off the latest version of its Ball E robot, roughly the size of a soccer ball. The bot can follow you around your home and interact with your other devices, like turning on and off the lights. It also comes with a built-in projector for meetings, fitness classes, and movie nights. Prepare yourself for something very strange. And speaking of movie nights, Netflix is making waves at CES, giving attendees a chance to see the trailer for the upcoming sci-fi series called Three Body Problem. The streaming company showcasing the footage on gaming headsets, similar to ones used in the show, which comes out in March. And it's from the producers behind Game of Thrones. To do something that felt radically different was both intimidating and also appealing. Ted Lindner, Fox News. All right, everyone, so check this out. This is happening over in East Tennessee as a Tennessee marching band has won some really big money and recognition after they took on the rock band Metallica. Take a look here. As All right. WCYB in our Tri-Cities uh, sister station is reporting Metallica put together a contest challenging college and high school marching bands to create exciting performances and play Metallica songs. Now, it was the Dobbins Bennett High School Marching Band from Kingsport, Tennessee, who won the national contest in the large high school category. They also took home the Fan Favorite Award. That means a total of $25,000, which will go towards instruments and equipment for band members. Looks like they had a great time out there, too. Let's get over to Greg Bovis now. He's uh, standing by, and I'm sure the inner fan in him, the inner rock band star in him is uh, looking at that foot footage with envy. 100%. I mean, I, I was in high school marching band 
as a drummer. So like watching that, I'm like, why couldn't we do Metallica? Why couldn't we do the Metallica tribute? We did all kinds of like old Broadway stuff from like, you know, like 1950 and they're doing Metallica. Jealousy, hey. jealousy settles in. Uh, Justin, we're code right again, the lights are on and we're gonna yeah. do the win situation okay. once again. But we're also gonna be code red and continue to be code red all the way through the weekend into next week because of this. Not only wind for tomorrow gusts of 55 miles per hour, but also dangerous cold that is going to move in Monday through Wednesday. Now the afternoon of Wednesday, not that bad. That's kind of that rebound period, but the nighttime temperatures, Sunday night into Monday, Monday night into Tuesday, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, will all be in the single digits. We're very, very cold. With that comes the possibility of our first snowfall accumulation across most of Middle Tennessee. These percentages just mean that the higher the number, the better the chance we have to get one inch or more of snow, Nashville on north and west. So that means that there's a pretty good chance that not only we get snow that sticks, there could be an inch on the ground by the end of Monday. We're not giving snowfall totals yet. The National Weather Service is not giving snowfall totals yet. We're playing this the way you're supposed to with winter weather because you don't really get a good handle on how we should react to amounts, impact, and timing until about two days out. That means that late tomorrow into early Saturday, we're gonna have a real firm grasp on late Sunday into Monday when it comes to snow. Just know that you might have to use the shovel a little bit on Monday. And you can always get your updates, especially for weather on Twitter. And you're all just Greg Bobus, is where you can go to submit your dog of the day. So any kind of way you want to connect, please feel free to do so. Dry on Saturday, snow late on Sunday, Arctic air arrives Sunday into Monday. And the seven day forecast continues to have the weekend as the pivot point between 57 later today. You're waking up in the 30s, you're gonna have sun today and a high of 57. Today is an easy one until after midnight into the overnight hours. Then a wind advisory kicks in tomorrow morning. We'll be actively tracking rain and watching those wind gusts go up throughout the day on your Friday. Circle traffic for you this morning. Let's take a quick look if we can at what we're dealing with. I-440 at 21st Avenue over there in the Green Hills area. As you can see, traffic moving along uh, pretty well. Uh, no big problems to show you out there so far this morning. We're actually doing very, very well on your drive. We'll continue to watch the roads here for you, let you know what we can find. Uh, but right now, your traffic could not be better here for your Thursday morning. Where Starbucks is now being sued for the alleged deceptive marketing of its coffee and tea products. The National Consumer League filed the lawsuit yesterday. The group alleges that Starbucks misrepresented to consumers that it's, quote, committed to 100% ethical coffee sourcing and 100% ethically sourced tea. The lawsuit claims that Starbucks coffee bean and tea leaves are sourced from supply chains that have committed severe human rights and labor abuses. Now, in a statement in response, Starbucks says it plans to aggressively defend against the claims in this particular lawsuit. We'll see what they say a little bit later. Well, coming up, we can find out what parents in Tennessee are calling their brand new babies these days. We're going to talk about some baby names. Fox 17 News continues to be in a code red weather alert for you this morning as we take a live look out across Nashville. Greg Bobas is going to tell us about the strong winds and bitter cold to come. This Fox 17 this 455 is the time. Quick look here at your code red weather alert. You can see where uh, downtown Nashville is very busy right now with construction out there for um, a lot of the crews doing the work out there in the honky tonks. The problem is the bitter cold is coming. I just wonder how many of them are going to be out there with five degree weather moves in. That's the big question. Greg Bobas will be along in the next few minutes to tell us about when those bitter cold temperatures will get here and the strong wind that will come in before they get here. Well, the Tennessee Department of Health has released the top baby names of 2023. Now, the top names were Elam, Oliver, James, it's probably Elam, Liam, Liam I'm not saying it correctly, um, James, William, and Noah. For girl names, they are Charlotte, Olivia, Amelia, Emma, and Ava. Now, Charlotte replaces Olivia, which held the top spot for the past three years. These are baby names, not tropical storm or hurricane names. 
They are not, but a, a couple of them on that list wouldn't surprise me if at some point they became one on, on the list. Taking a look right now, cranes are out. They're doing their thing. They're getting the construction done. Uh, Justin harkened to it earlier that when it gets really cold next week, it'll be interesting to see if they continue to do this work overnight when we have the single digit temperatures to creep in. So we'll keep our eye on the Broadway camera as we go in the next week. The feels like today to start off is in the 30s, so it's not bad, but a little wind is knocking us out of the 40 degree actual temperature range into the 30s for how it feels getting out the door. So that means when you're getting breakfast today, getting the kids ready for school, this is a good and easy start. We're going to have temperatures that do linger. They will fall into the 30s and they'll stay there throughout the morning. Plenty of sun when it comes up here a little before 7 o'clock and then we'll keep it until the sun sets. Then clouds will creep in overnight and our weather maker, the reason that we are in code red is because overnight into tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning's drive, Rain coming down, rain at the bus stop, wind picking up, the afternoon, wind gusts, the afternoon for your Friday will be as high as 55 miles per hour. That is stronger than most of our wind gusts that we saw Monday night into Tuesday. So an even more impactful situation moving into the end of the week. Circular traffic out there for you this morning. Let's get to it. This is going to be I-40 at Spence Lane over on the east side. As you can see, traffic moving along without issue. We're doing fine over there uh, this morning. If there is something that does get in your way, we'll be sure to let you know with Circular Traffic as we're live and local with you through 9 o'clock this morning. All right, let's move on as Amazon will be laying off hundreds of workers across its film and streaming platforms. This is in addition to layoffs at Prime Video, roughly 35% of staffers at Twitch, that's Amazon's live streaming platform, are also getting let go. The layoffs are coming after workers at Amazon MGM Studios are uh, coming in as the source close to the company described Wednesday's announcements as a quote, bloodbath, end quote. And uh, that includes several senior executives were among those who were let go. Roughly one and a half million people worked at Amazon as of late 2022. Well, multiple publications are now reporting that the band Paramore has now completed its 20 year contract with Atlantic Records and are now free agents. This is after some fans speculated that the band was breaking up. Now that's because the band's website went dark and most of the band's social media accounts were wiped clean. But sources told Variety and Billboards that the fears were unfounded. The Online Disappearing Act coincides with their longtime record contract ending late last month. The band's most recent album came out last February. Reps for Atlantic and the band are not commenting about this so far. Our five o'clock hour starts right now. You're watching Fox 17 News This Morning, your code red station. Waking up in another code red weather alert and another round of wind and rain combination that moves in. This time the wind could be even gustier than early in the week. We're going to break it down in your forecast. Five o'clock on the dot right now. And in case you missed it, a legend in the SEC is calling it quit. So what's next? Well, we're getting reaction this morning and uh, all the thoughts on who could next lead the Alabama Crimson Tide. Democratic Representative Justin Jones is voted to be silent. Coming up, find out why next. Thanks so much for starting your Thursday with us here on Fox 17 News this morning. I'm Jennifer Waddell. Erica is off today. We do begin with another code red weather alert and prepare for round two of what we saw earlier this week. Breaking down all the latest updates for you right now is code red meteorologist Greg Bobas. That we are. It's round two, almost a very similar setup where rain moves in first, wind picks up. This time, though, it's not going to be an overnight event. It's going to be during the day tomorrow. The rain moves in after 3 a.m. tonight, so all of your Thursday is going to be dry now. We've pushed the timeline back just a little bit, so if you still have any lingering things you've got to get done, you'll be in the 50s and sunny this afternoon. Not a bad day. Damaging wind, though, does move in for tomorrow during the afternoon. We think back to Monday into Tuesday, most of our wind was overnight and then gradually died down during the day. This time it picks up during the day. 
Wind gusts up to near 55 miles per hour right around lunchtime. Then the Arctic blast moves in we've been talking about. That'll be our next code red event that takes us into next week. Monday, Tuesday, and even Wednesday morning. Dangerous cold. The afternoon's not looking much better. The arrow, for the first time in a while, has been sliding over to the right more frequently. We had a good stretch of time when there wasn't much code red weather. So we had, you know, a brief little lull in things that were dangerously cold windy or severe weather. Friday is the first one. Sunday into Monday is the second one. They're both completely different. Here, here's how they're different. Again, tonight into tomorrow. 50s today, 50s tomorrow for high temperatures. The wind picks up in the afternoon. The rain moves out late afternoon. Then Sunday into Monday, snow moves in, cold moves in, high impact. Whether or not we get a decent amount of snow or a dusting or an inch, the bigger impact to everyone is going to be the cold with wind chills that have a possibility of going below zero multiple mornings in a row. So once we get through today and tomorrow, that becomes the big focus coming up going into the weekend. Greg, thank you very much. 502 is your time right now. Let's look at steer clear traffic. No major problems right now to report. This is I 40 at Spence Lane. Nice and calm here, but we do see a little bit of uptick in the number of cars out on the road. So consider that, um, you know, a blessing if you're trying to get out the door. No major problems. And by the way, no weather to impact your drive here on your Thursday morning. Kicking off now the top three stories you'll want to know about before you head out the door today. We begin with the big news from the SEC losing a legend. Love him or hate him. Nick Saban is stepping down as head coach at Alabama. 17 years down in Tuscaloosa. He collected 206 wins, six national championships, four Heisman Trophy winners on his teams and 10 SEC championships. Now, big question. Who's going to fill the role? Who will step into those shoes? A lot to be determined. Interviews will start happening soon. And by the way, we've got this story posted on our Fox Nashville Facebook page. Lots of folks commenting. I'd encourage you to head over there now and let us know what you think. Another big headline this morning, Donald Trump will not give his own closing argument at his civil fraud trial. The judge overseeing that case has taken back permission for him to do that. And that's after Mr. Trump's lawyers would not pledge that the former president would stick to relevant matters. Closing arguments set for later today. In the United Nations top court, a legal battle is beginning as South Africa has now brought charges of genocide against Israel over its war in Gaza. Two days of preliminary hearings begin today. Israel denying the genocide allegations. A decision will likely take weeks. Operation Crime and Justice, and we come back here closer to home where one person has critical injuries after a shooting in Antioch happening around 7 o'clock last night on Schoolhouse Court. Police confirm nobody in custody right now, so they're actively looking for whoever is responsible. Uh, we're working to find out more information, and as soon as we get it, we'll bring those updates to you. Well, more drama from the House floor as the 2024 legislative session is now underway in Nashville and one lawmaker ruled out of order on the House floor, causing controversy yet again. We've had two days in session and two days of drama. Fox 17 News' Karen Aguilar joining us live to tell us what happened here. Good morning. Good morning, Jen. I want to give you an idea of what could have happened here on Tuesday. Representative Justin Jones and House Majority Leader William Lamberth walking up these steps, crossing Legislative Plaza into the Capitol, trying to get into an elevator with House Speaker Cameron Sexton. Jones claiming that they weren't allowed in. Now, this is what prompted Representative Justin Jones to get on the House floor and address the members, telling them that uh, basically House Speaker Cameron Sexton was drunk on power, but I don't want you to have me say it. I want you to take a listen to him. I want to make clear that these rules are not about Democrats versus Republicans, but it's about each of us as members and a speaker who is drunk with power. Shortly after he gave that statement, a House member cut him off saying that it was disparaging comments and that he was out of order. The House members voting him to be silent. Now this comes as a new rule is limiting time on lawmakers to potentially avoid disruptions. Reporting live in front of the Capitol, Karen Aguilar, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. Country music artists and just music artists in general getting protections from the state. We'll tell you how coming up next. 
and good morning to you on this Thursday. It's January 11th and we are getting ready for more rain and high winds to move in later tonight and into tomorrow morning. And we track all those developments for you here live through nine. This Fox 17 this morning. Good morning and welcome into Fox 17 News this morning. Headlines from our communities right now. State leaders stepping in to help protect the music industry from artificial intelligence. Huge story that is now making national headlines because of what's happening here in Nashville. Fox 17 News Peyton Muse joining us live right now outside the Country Music Hall of Fame to explain uh, this, this big step. Good morning, Peyton. Good morning, Jen. So you said it right there, a big step in the music industry, country artists, musicians that we all know and love now, hopefully getting the support and protections that they need from AI technology. State leaders stepping in and created a bill to protect um, musicians from AI technology. What this bill is called is the Ensuring Likeness, Voice and Image Security Act or the Elvis Act. This bill is going to ensure that no one can rob the magic Tennessee artists create when it comes to music and leaders are stepping in here before things could get worse. AI has the potential to be an exciting tool that provides new possibilities for music makers. And we, as we embrace the promise of AI, uh, we have to protect creators from the risks too. Uh, this legislation provides a critical safeguard against the greatest threat that AI uh, poses to artists. Now, state leaders say that the hope is that other states across the nation will tackle this issue as well and take it head on, just like we are doing here in Tennessee. And Tennessee is the first state to enact this and even put this bill on the forefront for the rest of the nation to hopefully follow the lead here. And songwriters that have stepped through the Country Music Hall uh, of Fame, songwriters, engineers, music producers, they showed up here yesterday to thank the governor along with other state leaders for really tackling this issue before things could essentially get worse. Reporting live downtown, Peyton Muse, Fox 17 News, your code red station. All right, Peyton, thank you so much. 511 right now. Greg, I noticed that um, Peyton has on a jacket, but not the big fluffy, puffy coat this morning. Yeah. It's it's a little milder, huh? Yeah, 30s with wind chill, 40s actual air temperature. So if you can yeah. kind of get yourself away from the wind, it's not all that bad. So yeah, that jacket, you still want to have a coat of some sort, but you're going to look like the kid from, oh my gosh, what's Ralphie's little brother in her Christmas story? That, that's going to be everyone on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday morning. Every layer you can find you're going to want. 11 o'clock tonight, dry. Today, 57 and sunny. Really a nice day for your Thursday. And then overnight tonight, starting around 3 o'clock in the morning through 7. This is 7 a.m. tomorrow. Rain begins to move in. We're going to be tracking a lot of rain 7 to 9 o'clock tomorrow morning moving through. With wind gusts picking up, they'll be as high as 55 miles per hour late morning into the early afternoon. That is why we are code red. Power outage is possible, damaging wind, could knock down some more trees, power poles, power lines, and that's leading into a very cold air next week. So we'll, we'll monitor this all throughout the rest of today and tomorrow morning. Steer clear traffic time right now at 5 at 12, and all in all, not too bad out there on the roads to start your Thursday. We're going to take a live look right now. Uh, this is another check of I-40 at Spence Lane. Still looking good here. I'm going to do one quick check behind the scenes here just to make sure we don't have anything popping. Um, it looks like we are currently crash free. Yeah, that's that's confirmed. Uh, no crashes right now in the mid-state, but we've always got our eye on these TDOT cameras and all of our uh, police department reports. So the, the moment anything pops up, we'll be the first to let you know. Well, a Republican debate overnight gets tense. Nikki Haley, Ron DeSantis battling for second place. Plus, we had another Republican candidate drop out. We'll get you updated on all the critical moments from overnight. Plus, uh, wild updates this morning from a popular tourist location where an avalanche has now left one person dead. We'll tell you about the search for survivors right now. You know. 
Good morning. 515 is your time right now. Live look over at Nissan Stadium where the hunt is on for a new head coach for the Tennessee Titans. And we're learning more about who the Titans might be interested in. Yeah, we're getting a list of coaches names who who are, uh, you know, could be in the running. So we'll keep an eye on that for you. Plus, quick reminder, we do have a code red weather alert as we go into tonight and tomorrow morning. Greg will update, uh, update us on that in moments. Well, the countdown to the Iowa caucus is ticking away and just Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley on the stage last night uh, in a debate. Businessman Vivek Ramaswamy didn't qualify. Former President Donald Trump didn't show up. And then we had Chris Christie, who announced yesterday he's out. Fox News' Ted Linder taking a closer look at all the action. Nikki Haley's running to pursue her donors' issues. I'm running to pursue your issues. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley showing down in Des Moines Wednesday night for a CNN debate. We have watched our country be in disarray. We see the world on fire, and we need someone who's had executive experience. Both candidates taking aim at former President Donald Trump, who skipped the debate to appear in a town hall on the Fox News channel instead. For me, it's very much about no drama, no whining, and getting results and getting them done. He said he was going to build a wall and have Mexico pay for it. He did not deliver that. He said he was going to eliminate the debt, and he added $7.8 trillion to the debt. When it comes to reducing inflation and addressing the national debt, Haley said it's time for an accountant to be in the White House, while DeSantis touted energy independence. We're going to eliminate the federal gas and diesel tax in this country and cut taxes on the middle class and simplify those brackets. Energy independence isn't even, it's not, it's good for consumers. It's good to reduce inflation. Border security also a huge issue. Biden's let in 8 million people just in four years. They all have to go back. We need to defund sanctuary cities once and for all. No more safe havens for illegal immigrants. Meanwhile, former President Donald Trump remains the frontrunner for the Republican presidential nomination. In a town hall on the Fox News Channel, he said, I have polls that show me leading by a tremendous amount in New Hampshire and a lot in Iowa and nationwide we're leading by almost 60 points. So I'm not exactly worried. The Iowa Republican caucuses will be held January 15th. Ted Lindner, Fox News. Another headline across the nation here on this Thursday morning, an avalanche in the popular resort town of Lake Tahoe swept up several people. Officials say one person is confirmed dead, three others injured. Uh, this is a very sad day for my, for my team and, and uh, everyone here. Our hearts are out to the and condolences to the, to the victim, to victim's family, and certainly to everybody else involved in the incident. That victim, a 66-year-old man who died, he was staying at the Palisades Tahoe Ski Resort, and you're looking at some video from that area right here. That resort shut down operations following the avalanche. It happened uh, yesterday morning, leaving behind a huge debris field 10 feet deep. Uh, nobody else reported missing as of right now. The avalanche, though, comes ahead of a powerful storm they're expecting. Could drop more than a foot of snow in Lake Tahoe this morning. It is just part of the wild weather, Greg, that we have seen nationwide the last few days. Yeah, we had Panama City Beach tornadoes right near it. Mm -hmm. We have the avalanche, Lake Tahoe. Mm -hmm. We have the northeast that had flooding, blizzards in the northwest, Pacific Northwest. It's, it, it's been a lot to work through this week, and we're not even close because we're going to go in the next week and the entire country gets the cold. Okay. So we're going to talk Here about that. Oh, also, it's National Milk Day, by the way. So National get, Milk Day? So huh. a, a good reason to get that calcium for the morning. Okay. Going into the morning into the <laughs> afternoon. Today's a great day. Honestly, this is one of those days where you might want to get outside or go pick up some lunch or go pick up anything you might need for the next couple of days. Maybe pick up some milk for when it gets cold. So you've already got everything stocked up in the fridge because this Arctic blast moves in Sunday into Monday, and we keep getting colder and colder when it comes to the temperatures that are coming in here as far as what we're forecasting. Single digit lows, I wouldn't even say possible. I say a guarantee Monday night and Tuesday night. First accumulations of snow, still no real indication of the specificity of the accumulation we're going to see. So no real snowfall totals we can give you just yet because every time we get new information in, it changes a little bit in terms of where the center of the snow band moves, the timing of it. I will tell you this, whatever snow we do get, 
it's going to be very fluffy like that fluffy very easy powdery snow because of how cold we are it's not going to be the chipping away at it and breaking your back trying to shovel kind of a snow we have a 70 percent chance of getting an inch or more of snow nashville onto the north and west so this very likely will be our first snow accumulation of the year it's just how much we're going to see by tomorrow night we're going to have that pinpointed pretty well for you going into the weekend so you can start planning ahead. The dangerous cold, that is for everyone. No way to get around it. Take a look at your seven day forecast. A couple extra seconds on it because 57 today and 58 tomorrow. Our code red right now is for rain that moves in after 3 a.m. tonight, picks up throughout tomorrow's drive times, ends in the afternoon, could even bring in some thunderstorms and right in the middle of your day tomorrow. 55 mile per hour wind gusts move in. We could be talking additional power outages before we get colder going into the weekend. Circular traffic this morning at 521. Here is a quick look here at I-40 very close to the airport at the exit. As you can see, things are moving along just fine. No big backups here at the airport exit either. We're doing fine as you get out there this morning. Of course, things can change, but right now we are accident free out there on the interstates as of uh, the last few minutes here. But the, we are expecting the congestion to start to build in coming up here in the next few minutes. And when it does, we'll be here to bring it to you with steer clear traffic live and local with you through nine. Justin, thanks. A new side of the pickleball craze in Nashville, Metro Parks, finishing up a pickleball stadium. We'll tell you where it is in minutes. The Electronic Express New Year's... 523 is the time pickleball is growing quickly when it comes to popularity across the country. A lot of apartment complexes are starting to build pickleball courts instead of tennis courts. So much so that the city of Nashville has decided to get into the game and they have put the finishing touches on a pickleball, not just court, but stadium, a place where people can go and watch pickleball. Now it's located at the Sportsplex, which is right next to Centennial Park in Nashville. It was an old tennis court stadium that needed renovation anyway, so they turned it into a pickleball stadium. Take a look. First dedicated pickleball courts in Nashville. We took the stadium court turn it into uh, uh, to pickleball courts. There's some uh, temporary netting there. That's a metal netting that can be rolled out of the way if we need the space. Now, unknown exactly how many people that uh, particular court will hold, but you saw all the bleachers around. It doesn't look like it's a couple of dozen. It looks like it will hold uh, maybe a couple of thousand there. And they say, depending on how successful the court becomes, they could turn more tennis courts into pickleball courts coming up here in the future. Pickleball really take it off here. Stadiums. Take a look here on your screen. This is the drop monitor from last Thursday. I show up because every Thursday they give us a new update at 8 o'clock in the morning. Now we know we've had some rain over the course of this week and we're going to put some more rain down now. So we're going to compare the map from last Thursday to this Thursday and see if we put a little dent in this. I'll tell you an extra half of an inch of rain is going to be likely late tonight into tomorrow. So what's our future rain look like? It's not going to be as much as we saw early in the week, Monday into Tuesday, but still a half of an inch, two thirds of an inch of rain can't be ruled out as the system does move in pretty quickly. 3 a.m. through about noon and we're done in the Nashville metro area tomorrow. But the wind, that's what takes over for the rest of the day. Think about how we had power outages by Tuesday morning. We had some areas where we had some down power poles and lines and we also had some damage to some trees and some tree limbs and uprooted trees. We can see a lot of that during the daytime hours while we're awake, while we're trying to drive around town. So keep that in mind. That is why we are code red going into tomorrow. Steer clear traffic for you this morning at I-24 Hickory Hollow Parkway. As you make that drive out there uh, very close uh, to the Antioch area, you can see where traffic is pushing its way through out there. Uh, no big problems as you approach the Tanger outlets. Of course, that could change just like that. But right now, we're doing good so far out there this morning. Here is on the north side, 65 and 24. As you make that drive in from Madison and Hendersonville and Goodlettsville, places like that, or Whites Creek and Jolton, places like that, also looking just fine out there this morning. Of course, when things change, we'll be here for you. Circular traffic got you covered live and local through 9 o'clock. State leaders stepping in to protect the music industry. We'll tell you more coming up next. Plus Fox 17 will continue our code red 
weather alert. Strong winds making their way here to the mid-state. That's why it's important that the crane workers go ahead and get that work in. When that strong wind comes in, they're going to have to bring those cranes down. Plus, the bitter cold is going to do a number on uh, quite a few people who work outside as well. So, Greg Bobas will have the details of when the cold air will push in, when the snow possibilities could push in, when the uh, strong wind will get here as well. He'll have all those details so you can plan in minutes. Toughness. Strength. You're watching Fox 17 News This Morning, your code red station. Fox 17 News and the code red weather alert. Nothing happening this morning. Actually, a fairly mild start with temperatures that are in the low 40s and feeling like, like we're in the 30s. But we have rain that arrives overnight and even windier afternoon for your Friday than what we saw Monday into Tuesday. That is why we're code red. We'll look at the hour by hour breakdown in your forecast. Coming up, lawmakers react to a Democratic representative voted to be silent. Steer clear traffic out there this morning. This is I-24 at Old Hickory Boulevard. This is out there in Antioch. As you can see, traffic moving along fine. When will things clog up? We've got answers for you soon. Good morning to you, and thanks for starting your day with us here on Fox 17 News this morning. I'm Jennifer Waddell. Let's get straight to the weather forecast. I know folks are really curious about not only what we're going to experience tonight into tomorrow, but what we're looking at going into next week as well. Greg, so much on the table to work through. There is so much to talk about in the next half hour. We're going to get to all of it, but it's going to kind of come in chunks. We'll start with the here and now, get us through tomorrow, and then in about 10 minutes or so from right now, we're going to look ahead to what happens going into the weekend and a big blast of cold air. We're code red, though, right now for wind overnight tonight into tomorrow. Most of our biggest wind gusts, strongest wind gusts are going to be in the middle of the day tomorrow. Wind advisory in effect 6 a.m. tomorrow through midnight tomorrow into Saturday morning. It's for all of Middle Tennessee. Wind gusts could be up to 55 miles per hour. Average wind speed, that consistent steady wind speed throughout the hour by hour is going to be 25 to 35 miles per hour. That's stronger than it was Monday night into Tuesday. Perspective. Wind advisory, what is the criteria for one? Average wind speed, 25 to 40 miles per hour. We're going to be right in that threshold. Wind gusts, 40 to 57 miles per hour. We're right in there. High wind warning. We do not have this, but portions of East Tennessee do. So think if you're, if you're traveling this weekend and you're going in that direction, 60 mile per hour plus wind gusts as you go out in that direction. So just keep that, just be mindful if you're traveling anywhere this weekend to just know what the weather's like, where you're heading, because that's the big thing here. Wind impacts of wind gusts up to 50 miles per hour, not only tree damage and power lines, but it could even give you a couple shingles off the roof. That's how strong it is tomorrow afternoon while we're all awake and just trying to get through our day. So as you wake up with us tomorrow morning, we're gonna be actively tracking all this in real time as it moves in. Circular traffic out there for you this morning. Let's get over to I-24 Old Hickory Boulevard. This is out there in the uh, Antioch, Cane Ridge area. Things moving along just fine. No big problems so far out there. Uh, keep in mind that this area will bunch up with traffic a little bit later in the morning. No question about it, especially once uh, the school bell rings at Cane Ridge High School, which you can't see, but it's just off camera over there a little bit. Uh, when that bell rings, things will change over there for sure. Uh, but right now we're doing okay. Here is a uh, Another look here. Uh, this is uh, where where are the cameras going? Here we go. I. Uh, 40 near Church Street over there on the west side of town. Things moving along just fine over on the West Loop as well. We'll continue to watch things for you. Politics and headlines here this morning on this Thursday and more drama in day two of the new session in the Tennessee legislature. Uh, one lawmaker who is silenced prompts reaction from other lawmakers, and this is someone who has been in the headlines before. Fox 17 News reporter Karen Aguilar joining us live at the Capitol, where there's been a whole lot going on in the first two days. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Jen. The vote comes after lawmakers restricted people from getting into the galleries at the Capitol. They can't get into the galleries without a ticket. On Tuesday, people walked across Legislative Plaza inside the Capitol, outside the House chambers, chanting alongside Representative 
Justin Pearson asking not to be silenced. Now, there was the vote to shut down Representative Justin Jones. Jones getting on the House floor yesterday and claiming on the first day of the legislative session, Speaker Cameron Sexton did not let him and Majority Leader William Lamberth onto the elevator here at the Capitol. House members then voted to silence him. One member saying it was disparaging comments. A new House rule that silences members limits their time on the floor. Fox 17 News spoke to two lawmakers who react. Any effort or rule to limit debate or limit who can even speak during debate is, you know, it's concerning. I think it really defeats the purpose and the spirit of, of our democracy. These rules are, are fair, they're reasonable, and they're out there in the open for everyone to see. And uh, some folks just rather ignore those rules just to disrupt and stop the democratic process. Both lawmakers agree that they want to stop disruptions and focus more on the process of making laws. Reporting live in front of the Capitol, Karen Aguilar, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. Karen, thank you. More headlines from our community here at home right now. Leaders in Nashville stepping in to help protect the music industry from artificial intelligence. We have talked so much about AI as we wrapped up 2023 and going into 2024, it will stay in the headlines. Right now, Fox 17 News reporter Peyton Muse joining us live outside of the Country Music Hall of Fame to talk about how Tennessee leaders are the first in the nation uh, to come up with this kind of a proposal. Good morning. Good morning, Jen. So from songwriters to uh, recording artists to engineers, some who have stepped foot in the Country Music Hall of Fame now hopefully getting the protections that they need from AI technology thanks to state legislatures. And you said that right. Tennessee is the first in the nation to create a bill to protect creators. Um, we saw what happened over the summer when it comes to SAG-AFTRA and the protests regarding AI technology and Governor Bill Lee, Senate Majority Leader Jack Johnson and House Majority Leader William Landberth are all coming together. Governor Bill Lee introduced a bill called the Ensuring Likeness Voice and Image Security Act or the Elvis Act. This bill will, will ensure that no one can rob the magic Tennessee musicians create and one of those artists Lindsay L who has been in the Nashville music community for about 14 years says the state is setting an example for the rest of the world with this bill no one wants to hear their voice or see their image taken without permission or used out of context this landmark legislation will help protect artists against those threats and set the stage for protection nationally and around the world now L was one of the many artists that thanked legislators for stepping in and acting on this quickly. Now, like we said, Tennessee is the first in the nation to do this, and state leaders are really hoping that this will set the stage for the rest of the nation. Reporting live downtown, Peyton Muse, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. Peyton, thank you so much for that update. It's 537. Happy Thursday to you. We've got a live look from downtown Nashville this morning. A little bit milder this morning than what we had seen uh, the past few days, but more changes are in store. We're going to let you know how all these weather changes could impact your afternoon plans today, the morning bus stop tomorrow, and then, of course, looking at those snow chances as we get into the weekend. Good morning. We are Fox 17 News this morning. Your live local news source always here for you through 9 a.m. And a live look now. Downtown Nashville is absolutely covered in work right now. So I'm looking to the right of the screen. We've got a giant crane right in front of merchants doing some work up on the looks like the rooftop area there. You look down closer to the river. Broadway is shut down, folks. Uh, you cannot get uh, all the way down to the riverfront along Broadway. So just monitoring all that for you, plus so many other stories here on Fox 17 News. We have one person with critical injuries this morning after a shooting that happened overnight in Antioch. It happened on Schoolhouse Court. Right now, police tell us they don't have anybody in custody and very few details as we speak, but we're working to get more updates. And as we get them, we'll bring them to you. Right now, let's check back in with Greg, see how things are, you know, kind of shifting around, Greg. And yeah. I know you've got a lot you know, like an, almost like somebody who would juggle where you've got a lot of things in the air at once. Yeah. 
and I'm you a know, bit of Virginia. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the thing is that I, I, I can't actually juggle, but I can juggle the weather for you to make sure we know what's going to happen this morning. No problems. Here's a live look downtown. We actually are pretty mild. We're in the low 40s. We feel like we're in the 30s right now. Those current temps on the right side of your screen. Bus stop is fine this morning. We, we still want a coat, but it's not that bone chilling cold that we're going to see next week. And that is going to move in for us. So keep that in mind. Feels like temperatures across the board are at least at 30 degrees or warmer than that. By next week, we'll have wind chills that are below zero. That's not why we're code red right now. It's wind and rain that return. We were windy Monday night into Tuesday. Wind gusts will be even higher tomorrow morning into the afternoon. We're going to focus on that coming up in a few minutes. Just one of the things we're juggling here in the forecast this morning. Still clear traffic out there for you this morning. Let's get a good look here at what we're dealing with. This is going to be I-40 at Church Street over there on the uh, west side of town there. As you can see, traffic moving along without issue. We're doing okay as you approach NES and uh, the, what used to be called the Lifeway building over there uh, and uh, the, things like that. You're moving along just fine uh, so far over there. Here is a look at another area of town. This is going to be 24 near Bradley Parkway. So far, we're moving just fine over there as well. But this is the area that's going to start to bunch up before others do. We're going to give you the very latest drive times coming up in just a few. The rain has moved out, but now millions of Americans are cleaning up from this week's massive storm. I'm Katie Byrne in Lodi, New Jersey. I've got the details coming up. Caitlin Clark. Hey there, 545 is your time right now. And uh, Fox 17 News, uh, glad to be here for you to get your day started. We appreciate each and every one of you joining us every weekday morning through 9 a.m. And uh, just a reminder for you here, we do have this code red weather alert. Um, and we know that you all wake up at different times in the morning. You got different schedules. So we just want to make sure you're prepared for the weather event tonight into tomorrow morning. Greg's been telling us about the high winds and the heavy rain again. So we'll help you get prepared in minutes. Right now, also a heads up in your community for Bellevue. The Bellevue branch of the Nashville Public Library is going to stay closed through Monday because they have water damage from earlier this week. Talking about the, you know, high winds and heavy rain. Um, we understand that the Bellevue's book drop is closed during this time as well. So the library is asking you to return all your books and other materials to another Nashville Public Library location um, or just keep them with you until they reopen. They're going to adjust your due dates um, and they don't charge overdue fines. So just a heads up there again, water damage from the storm earlier this week. We have round two coming in tonight into tomorrow. Right now in Operation Crime and Justice, Fox 17 News getting a better look at the number of guns that have been confiscated at airports last year. And Nashville makes the top five list of airports that had the highest number of guns seized. BNA, the fifth airport with the most guns caught at TSA checkpoints last year. TSA says 188 in all confiscated by officers here at BNA. And when we take a look at the top five airports and also we're going to kind of break it down here for you, um, we have in order the the number one airport with the highest number of guns seized would be Atlanta. That's Hartsville Jackson. Then we've got the Dallas Fort Worth International Airport, Houston's George Bush, Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport, and then there's Nashville rounding out the top five. All right, promised a, a, a deeper look at all the impacts with Greg. I know, I feel like we all just need to take a collective breath. Yeah, and, we do. You know, I know you're busy and people in our communities are a little frenetic about, do I need to make the milk and bread run? Do I need to go get a sled? What? you know, what's going on? Because so many folks are looking ahead to next week. Yeah, looking ahead to it. And the, the way to look at it is, it's never good when you have a big wind event that leads directly into cold. Mm -hmm. We had the wind event earlier this week. We didn't get too terribly cold after it. Right. But we're going to go from high wind tomorrow to 20 degrees on Monday. Yeah. So restoring power, if any power outages are out, there's going to be huge. Yeah, I'm thinking about that. And, you know, to your point, single digit temperatures. And I can't help but think back to last year, right, December of 2022, when we had that dangerous cold snap. Yeah, so we start preparing now. We're telling you okay. way in advance. Yeah. Code red is for tomorrow. At least okay. this this round of this it is. Round, yeah. But I'm not going to discount what's happening next week. Next week, we're going to end up spending half of each half hour all the way through nine, breaking down tonight into tomorrow, and then 
what happens Sunday into Monday. So we have all the pieces together of the puzzle. This is tonight into tomorrow. We have no cause for concern today. This is the heads up of what happens waking up tomorrow morning. It's that 24 hour advanced warning. Here's 11 p.m. We're still dry. We'll be sunny in 57 this afternoon. It's actually really nice Thursday ahead of us. 3 a.m. tomorrow, rain begins to move in. Most of it will be west of I-65. Light in nature as it starts, picks up real quick. Here's 7 o'clock, moves in. 7 o'clock through 9 a.m. Listen to that time frame again. 7 to 9 a.m., most of our rain starts to come down. Heavy rain at times. Wind begins to pick up. This is right at the bus stop time and right during the morning commute. This could impact us going into the afternoon as well. On the backside of this rain, a few thunderstorms could fire off picking up the rest of the moisture, and that could end up bringing us wind gusts near 55 to 60 miles per hour. Afternoon is the best chance for the strongest wind tomorrow. Steer clear traffic out there for you. Uh, let's get a good look here at what we're dealing with at I-24, uh, very close to Haywood Lane. This is out there in Antioch. As you can see, traffic moving along. No big issues out there so far this morning. We're doing just fine. Let's take a look at those drive times out there uh, so far here. Coming in from Mount Juliet at 24 minutes. Murphy's World, 52 minutes. Franklin, 25 minutes in from the south side. If it changes, and it will, we'll let you know. Thousands of people are without power this morning after heavy rain and high winds pummeled the eastern U.S. this week. Yes, we're dealing with our own issues here at home, but we've got massive flooding in some communities and more damage uh, even beyond that. So we're going to get you updated this morning here with Fox Weather's Katie Byrne. High water trucks going street by street in this New Jersey community on Wednesday, helping residents escape rising floodwaters. Officials say some basement apartments here in Lodi took on at least a foot of water during Tuesday's storm. I didn't think it was going to get as bad as it did because I, when, I, when I was checking every night, all night. And more could be on the way. The National Weather Service says New Jersey's Passaic River should crest on Thursday, even as nearby residents clean up from last month's flooding. If you come across a roadway that is uh, blocked off or appears to be closed, please do not drive on that water because the vehicle is going to get stuck and then the first responders are going to have to go out there. The cleanup is also underway throughout the rest of the eastern U.S. Utility crews are out in full force restoring power to thousands of homes and businesses that lost power during the storm. New York and Pennsylvania seeing the most outages. We have over 400 high voltage resources, additional uh, vegetation crews from outside of Long Island, over 100, and additional wire watching and damage assessments as well. While in the southeast, the National Weather Service is sending teams to multiple states on Wednesday and Thursday to survey damage from suspected tornadoes. One moment it was a little brain, little breeze, and the next moment just big gust of wind came through. Forecasters expect the eastern U.S. to get hit with more rain and wind this weekend. In Lodi, New Jersey, Katie Byrne, Fox Weather. 5.52 is the time right now. And do you ever wonder what's in a name? Well, it turns out there's a lot. And we're going to give you a new report from Tennessee on baby names in minutes. Fox 17 News at 9. Cover 5.54 your time taking a look at your forecast and I want to focus on the weekend. The weekend really is the pivotal point in the forecast where everything drastically begins to change. 50 is later on today. That'll be your high temperature range. 57 in Nashville, mainly sunny. Overnight after 3 a.m. the rain does begin to move in as we just talked about a few moments ago and picks up throughout the morning. Wind picks up throughout the day and brings in our first push of cold air. 40 degrees on Saturday. 37 on Sunday, dry Saturday, snow late very Sunday, but the cold air arrives Sunday into Monday. And that's when we'll go from 58 degrees Friday to 22 degrees on Monday. Weekend, big transition period. You're gonna to wanna to have the Fox 17 code weather app for the hour by hour forecast, the seven day forecast, and the radar. Rain, first round, snow possibilities. The second round, we'll talk about all of those and look at your seven-day forecast. There are many things to break down in this forecast, so you want to stick with us going into six o'clock because we're not only talking about the wind, but it's going to be during the day when we're trying to drive around, when the kids are getting home from school tomorrow. There are a lot of moving parts that we'll make sure you know all about in a few minutes. 
Clear, clear traffic for you this morning. 65 on the north side of Trinity Lane. As you can see, traffic moving in there from that north side. We're doing really nicely uh, so far up there this morning. Things are starting to bunch up, though, on that drive in from the north side. That is uh, typical for this time of the morning. So we do expect that drive time to start to slow down there from Madison and Hendersonville, places like that. Here's that drive in from Laverne this morning. Good morning, Rutherford County. On that drive, things are also starting to bunch up just a little bit. You can see the brake check starting to come in as more and more people get on on that ramp there at Waldron Road. We're going to give you the latest drive times coming up in our 6 o'clock hour. The Tennessee Department of Health has just released its top baby names from 2023. And uh, just curious, if you had a baby, is your name on it? Let's look. Top names for boys. Liam, Oliver, James, William, and Noah. By the way, William and Liam have been favorites in Tennessee for years. When it comes to the baby girls, the top names are right here. Number one, Charlotte. Then we have Olivia, Amelia, Emma, and Ava. Uh, Charlotte is replacing Olivia, which used to be the number one name for the last three years. Barbie has been, you know, all the rage the last year or so, especially with the Barbie movie. And well, now Mattel is releasing a new lineup of dolls and you're looking at them right here. And they're all related to the entertainment industry. You could say one is a studio executive that has a smartphone. Uh, there's a director with a viewfinder and a script, a cinematographer with a clipboard and a red carpet ready movie star. So you're looking at all of them right here. The dolls are available. But listen to this. Do you remember when you could buy a Barbie for like $9.99? Not anymore, guys. These Barbies are $50. So save up now. Girl Scout cookie season is back. Maybe that'll help cure your winter blues. Get you some thin mints or whatever you like. Fan favorites like the thin mints, the Samoas and the Tagalongs, they're all coming back. So the ones that you have uh, come to love over the years. But interestingly enough, this year, there will be no new cookie flavors this season. No new cookies. And uh, as we have seen with just about everything else, they may be more expensive. But it depends on your troop. The Girl Scouts of America says each council determines their own cookie prices. So not every troop will implement a price increase. So just depend on where you buy them. And if you want some coffee to go with your cookies and you want coffee without any human interaction <laughs> there's a robot barista that might be right up your alley this is adam a robotic barista created by a company called rich tech robotics this robot uses artificial intelligence of course lots of cameras facial recognition software to make coffee um, other drinks and the creators say even food. Customers at this spot, we were working to find out exactly where this is, um, but folks who have had interactions with this robotic barista say it's, uh, it's been a pleasure. Now, this is uh, in test phases, so as it turns out, it's not in a particular coffee shop just yet. This is more like a lab experience. I, look at those arms. Anybody else kind of weirded out by the arms? What on earth? Do they have to? I, I, it looks like something from Go Go Gadget. Inspector Gadget. <laughs> Go Go arms. Gadget Coffee Robin. Right? Robin. Oh my gosh. I mean, I don't know, y'all. I. This AI stuff is just it's next. I spill over my drinks on myself as is. <laughs> But will they spell your name right on the cup when they write it? Gerg. <laughs> All right, our six o'clock hour starts right now. Good morning. You're watching Fox 17 News This Morning, your code red station. Time right now, 6 o'clock, waking up here on a Thursday morning. The Crane Game's going on on Lower Broadway, bottom right-hand side of your screen. Might be the last good morning for that because we are in a code red weather alert. Rainy by tomorrow morning, even stronger wind for your Friday afternoon than we saw earlier this week. We'll time it out in your forecast. A lot of chaos happening down here at the Capitol this week. Find out the latest next. And right now on Fox 17 News this morning, a legend steps down. Fox 17 News looking at what's next for the SEC and Alabama football as Nick Saban retires.
Live look there at I-24 near Albeville Road down there in the uh, Laverne area, Smyrna area. We're going to give you the latest on your drive times coming up in a few. All righty. Good morning to you, and thanks for starting your Thursday with us here on Fox 17 News this morning. I'm Jennifer Waddell. The story of the day is the weather, 100%, and whether we are discussing a system moving in tonight into tomorrow, which is why we're in a code red, or keeping an eye on that no possibility for next week. We do have a lot to get to. A lot to get to, and we, we will get to all of it. We're going to do it in small little portions so we're not throwing a bunch of stuff at you at once. We'll start with the here and now, and then we'll break down the timeline of everything happening today into tomorrow, and then we'll get to the end of the week. We're going to go literally in story mode here. Rain returns late tonight. Your daytime, perfect today. 57 degrees and sunny. We're mild this morning in the 30s to right near 40 easy for your Thursday. Damaging wind though for tomorrow afternoon. This will not be an overnight wind event. It will be right in the middle of the day. 55 mile per hour wind gusts. That's why we're code red. Power outages, down power poles, and we could even have some damage to trees and homes. And if you didn't put your patio furniture away earlier this week, you're going to want to do it this time for sure. Even windier than it was earlier in the week. So the broad strokes of your forecast are late tonight into tomorrow morning. The rain moves in. Wind picks up for the afternoon. And then cold air and possible snow, as Jen mentioned, moves in Sunday into Monday. So we'll look at future track for tomorrow in the next check of the forecast, and then we'll get into the cold stuff in about 10 minutes. Circular traffic out there this morning. Let's get you to I-65 and Armory Drive there on the south side of town. You can see where traffic is moving just fine. Uh, we have not picked up any major crashes out there uh, so far this morning. That is great news for you if you need to get out and about. What is going to happen this very hour is these pictures are going to start to change because more and more traffic is going to get out there on the roads. Uh, so a lot more people are going to be crowding up out there, not just at Armory Drive, but also here on Almaville Road uh, near the Nissan plant. More and more folks are going to get out there, and that is going to slow things up. We're going to give the latest drive times coming up here in about five minutes. See you then, Justin. It has been busy at our Capitol in Nashville this legislative session, just two days in, and we have seen chaos erupting both days. Fox 17 News reporter Karen Aguilar tells us what's been going on as we now are going into day three. Good morning. Good morning, Jen. Well, first we've seen some people going into the Capitol, standing outside the House chambers, chanting for their voices to be heard. This is following lawmakers prohibiting them from going into the galleries without having a ticket. And now we're hearing from Representative Justin Jones, who says that somewhere inside of that Capitol, he and House Majority Leader William Lambert tried to get into an elevator with House Speaker Cameron Sexton and was denied. Now, Representative Jones took to the House floor yesterday and describes what happened. Listen. Uh, we're trying to get on the elevator and the Speaker's security put his hand up to Lambert and said, you can't get on with the Speaker. He pushed our majority Republican leader and said, you cannot get on with the Speaker. Now, as a reminder, Jones sued Speaker Sexton last year after he was expelled for wanting gun reform following the Covenant School shooting. Now that's context moving forward as you listen to what Jones has to say next. I want to make clear that these rules are not about Democrats versus Republicans, but it's about each of us as members and a speaker who is drunk with power. Shortly after Representative Jones finished that statement, he was interrupted by another House member who called his comments disparaging. And then the House took a vote to have him silenced. Reporting live in front of the Capitol, Karen Aguilar, Fox 17 News, your Code Red station. And uh, big news, in case you missed it yesterday, from the University of Alabama, head coach Nick Saban is retiring. So what's next? Who's going to step into that position? We know that Saban brought the Crimson Tide to victory with six national titles, 11 SEC titles, uh, making a mark on Tuscaloosa with things like his Nick, uh, Nick's Kids Foundation. Uh, that's an organization that he started with his wife, Terry. So more than just about football here. And as I mentioned, um, you know, what's going to be next? Well, lots of reaction and folks who think they know what should be next. <laughs> Let's read some of the reaction coming in this morning. This is from Deion Sanders, who, by the way, um, 
not an odds favorite to be the next coach, but 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 he's on a list. Uh, Dion saying, wow, college football just lost the goat to retirement. Wow, I knew it would happen one day soon, but not this soon. The game has changed so much that it chased the goat away. College football, let's hold up our mirrors and say honestly what you see. All right, so there's one perspective and Alabama students paying their respects to the legend by bringing his favorite snack, oatmeal cream pies, putting them at the foot of the statue there outside of Bryant-Denny Stadium. And we're hearing from you as well. We've got the story posted over on our Facebook page right now. Uh, Y'all have been leaving your comments. We've also got a poll going over on Twitter asking, can Alabama win a national title with Coach Saban gone? And 53% of you say no. This is open now. Uh, we posted it this morning, so you got lots of time to let us know what you think. You can vote and leave a comment anytime at Twitter.com. 606 right now and trying to turn down the temperature uh, at the state capitol. We just heard from Karen Aguilar about the heated first two days. Um, why there are a lot of folks on both sides of the aisle who say they just want things to be more civil here in Nashville. We'll tell you how two lawmakers are trying civility in this tense climate in minutes. U.S. Navy ships. 6.09 is the time. Welcome back. Fox 17 News this morning. Live look right over the uh, horizon here of downtown Nashville on the Don's early lights. Greg Bobas is going to give us the very latest with your forecast as we are expecting heavy winds and cold temperatures to invade Middle Tennessee coming up here over the next few days. That's why we've gone cold red. Well, day three of the Tennessee House and Senate will get started a little bit later today. And we have been reporting on some of the protests and loud and long speeches over the first two days. Some members were silenced, as you've heard. The gavels have been going on. People have been booing from the galleries. That was just over the first two days. But for just a moment on Wednesday, there was one Democrat and one Republican who tried to express getting beyond some of the noise to have a real conversation. What you're about to witness is an actual conversation of back and forth between one Democrat from Nashville and a Republican from Portland about how to try to cut through some of the noise. I want to make sure that the rules take down the temperature in here. The temperature is, is rising. And let's not start off the way that we're starting off now. Remember, I asked us to look at these rules. Let's be fair to each and every one of us. We all came up here to represent our constituents, and my time is important just as everybody else's time. I and you, we have had several debates over the years, and I've always enjoyed those. I've, I've learned stuff from you. I, I hope you've learned stuff from my perspective as well, because we re represent different districts. You represent the same number of people that I do, and their voices are just as important as the voices of the individuals I represent. So the, the goal of this is to expand debate opportunities, not in any way to contract. See, it doesn't have to always be, you know, all the other stuff that we show all the time, but words are one thing's Actions are another. Day three kicks off at around nine o'clock this morning. And here we are, 611, taking a look at what I told you we're going to look at next, and that is the incoming weekend weather maker. The first half of it is going to be wind. The second half going to be cold and potential snow. Let's get through the rain and the wind first. Not a whole lot of rain, but the timing. It's not fun. It's not going to be easy to manage tomorrow morning. Today, you have sunshine in 50s. Right side of your screen, current temperatures are in the 30s and 40s. Mild start. Warmest morning we're going to have for the next 7 to 10 days easily this morning. 11 o'clock, still dry. This is 3 o'clock in the morning, and that was 11 p.m. still dry. Entire day dry. 3 p.m., or I should say 3 a.m., goes to 7 a.m., and then the wind going to pick up going into the afternoon hours. First, the rain comes in, 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Most of our rain active on the radar during that push for the morning drive and the kids at the bus stop. And then the wind comes in on the backside of this, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and 1 o'clock. Very strong wind gusts up to 55 miles per hour. This is going to be a very windy system as it tracks in. You can see here wind gusts 35 to 55 miles per hour in the brown shaded area. This is at 10 a.m. Through, through 1 p.m. going into tomorrow. We have to watch out for power outages and down to tree limbs. 
Steer clear traffic out there for you. We just picked up a brand new crash. This one's down in Williamson County. I-65, very close to Highway 96. That's going to be exit uh, 65. The same exit that you would use for the uh, Williamson County Medical Center there. Uh, right off of I-65. Uh, you can see where crews are busy there on the scene right now. Trying to get that car or whatever's happening there uh, under control. They are squeezing the traffic over just a little bit. Uh, so you can get by. You want to use Highway 431 or... Highway 31. There's two roads on either side there that can get you past. We're going to give a closer look coming up in just a few. Well, coming up, we've got continuing coverage of the damaging winter storms across the United States, and they are damaging in a number of different ways from an avalanche out west to severe tornadoes in the south. State leaders stepping in to protect the music, the music industry. We'll tell you how coming up next. Good morning and welcome back to Fox 17 News this morning. Always working to keep you updated in your community. Right now, we have state leaders across Tennessee from many communities working to protect the music industry from artificial intelligence. This is a topic that dominated the headlines at the end of 2023. It will continue to be a hot topic and a source of controversy going into 2024. So telling us about the local impacts here, Fox 17 News' Peyton Muse joining us live right now outside of the country music Hall of Fame. Good morning, Jen. So from pro music producers to music engineers, songwriters, and even the recording artists themselves, some of which who have stepped foot through the Country Music Hall of Fame now hopefully will have protections when it comes to their craft. I mean, Nashville, we're known for, we're the heart of music from all genres, country, rock and roll, and now these artists are telling us that they're extremely alike or they're very happy that state leaders are taking action when it comes to protecting their craft from AI technology and we saw what happened over the summer with SAG-AFTRA and state leaders now stepping in to make sure things don't get worse or out of hand and Governor Bill Lee, Senate Majority Leader Jack Johnson, House Majority Leader William Lamberth are all banning together and Governor Lee introduced a bill called the Ensuring Likeness Voice and Image Security Act or the Elvis Act and this bill will ensure that no one can rob the magic Tennessee artists create and one of those artists is Lindsay L. She's been in the Nashville music community for about 14 years and says the state is setting an example for the rest of the world with this bill. AI deepfakes threaten creators' livelihoods, steal their authenticity, and break legitimate bonds between artists and their fans. This bill will achieve important protections that allow artists to continue to write, create, and perform as our authentic selves. Now, state leaders say the hope is that other states will follow suit and the rest of the nation will also pick up on this. And Tennessee is the first state in the country to enact a bill like this. Reporting live downtown, Peyton Muse, Fox 17 News, your code red station. Peyton, thank you very much. We have storm systems across the country with high impact. You know, we have seen those impacts here at home earlier this week uh, down to our south in very popular Gulf communities tornadoes spawning up near Panama City Beach. The National Weather Service does believe an EF2 tornado touched down in Bamberg, South Carolina as well. So getting us updated on all of those weather impacts, Will Rowe reports on the devastation. The flag is a symbol for the Bamberg community, beaten and battered but still standing tall. I've never seen something like this before hit Bamberg itself. At South Carolina Oak to Barrel, that's where the National Weather Service says an EF2 tornado touched down. About 2.40 the wind started picking up and getting a little more steady. Um, I walked out of the office, walked into the, our front showroom and seen the roof of the building across the street uh, blow off. The glass started shattering in our showroom, the windows and all that breaking. I just went to the back of the showroom and ducked in the corner and rode it out. Survey crews say the twister stretched three to 400 feet wide with wind speeds of up to 125 miles per hour. That, not many things in life scare me, but that one did. That's 
The only thing I can really attest to, it was the scariest thing, one of the scariest things I've ever done. There's still no time frame for when downtown Bamberg will be open again. We're all trying to pull things together to see if we can clean up and get things going again. And um, just say a prayer for us and um, we'll get there. Even in these circumstances that when all of this dust settles, when all of the dust settles, that we will stand in Bamberg County and still be able to declare that this is our finest hour. All right, now because of power outages and debris on a lot of roads, Bamberg uh, students will be finishing out the week with online learning. No classes due to the holiday coming up Monday either. Um, and we understand that students who are there right now are going to be able to make up anything that they might have missed. So, you know, when we look at the weather impacts across the country, whether it's been the tornadoes uh, there, as we just heard, the tornadoes down in Florida, blizzard conditions in Nebraska, avalanches in California, flooding in the Northeast. It, it, Greg, is there any one thing in particular that we're experiencing? Like I'm thinking back to the end of 2023. Mm -hmm. We talked a lot about El Nino. Yes. Is this connected to that at all? It is a little bit, but what I want to actually do is make you think of, think of it like this. Okay. Think about the cold air that we have coming in. Mm -hmm. Typical for winter. Okay. Typical for winter All right. that's coming in Sunday into Monday. What is happening right now in Canada is pushing the jet stream to the south. Okay. And think of the jet stream as like a lane of traffic. All right. Okay, the cars follow the lane. Mm -hmm. So if the lane's way up near the Canadian border, a lot of the weather stays up there and doesn't come as far south. Mm -hmm. When you start moving into the middle of the country, you get all the cold and snow. That would typically up, stay up that north. That would typically stay up there, and then you get more aggressive weather as, as warmer air tries to fight the cold air. Okay. And that's what's happening right now is that cold tries to come in. If, wow. if, yeah, so you're, you're pushing that lane of traffic. And wherever that lane lies uh -huh. is where you get these uh, mixing yeah. of atmospheres. Yeah, and so that, you get all this weird weather. Everything north of that lane is getting snow. Everything yeah. south of it is getting the severe weather. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Good explanation. Thank you. And this is another one I want to give you a little analogy here for when it comes to winter storm forecasting. Um, we're going to really break into this here in a few minutes because I want you to just really have an idea as we go into our 630 half hour why the likelihood of knowing impacts and how much totals we're going to see as far as snow goes Sunday into Monday. I'm going to give you an analogy when it comes to puzzles. So stick around for that coming up in a few minutes. Steer clear traffic out there for you this morning. Let's get a good look here at what's going on. This is going to be I-65 and Highway 96. This is down there in the Franklin area. As you can see, traffic is moving along. We are dealing with a crash, though. Uh, this is right before uh, exit 65 there, which is Highway 96 Murfreesboro Road. You know what I'm talking about. Right out there next to the Williamson County Medical Center or the Steak and Shake, depending on how you uh, decide you want to mark it in your mind. There's a Hardee's and a Waffle House out there you know what i'm speaking of uh, but there is a crash on the shoulder right now slowing things down just a little bit you can take highway 31 it's the best bet to steer clear or just give yourself an extra five to six minutes you can get by justin thanks we just got a good explainer from uh, greg bovis on why we're seeing the weather that we're seeing we'll continue to track the developments for you let you know the timing uh the highest impacts for you and when everything's going to start to push out keep it here for those updates live through nine the Electronic Express New Year's Blue. Good morning. New right now from Smoky Barn News. Six people and six pets managed to escape a house fire overnight. This video coming to us from Smoky Barn News, where the Springfield Fire Department, Robertson County EMS, Robertson County EMA, all showing up to this home. The family uh, has been connected with the Red Cross. So that is the good news. And again, all six people and all six pets making it out safely. We have a, a silver alert this morning from the TBI, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, looking for a 68 year old man from Laverne. Danny Dalton is uh, his name. His picture's on your screen right here. Last seen Monday. He does have a medical condition that could make it hard for him to get home safely. 5'8", 165 pounds with gray hair and blue eyes, and he might be wearing glasses like you see here in this picture. Um, he has an earring in his left ear. He was wearing sweatpants uh, the last time anybody saw him and a sweatshirt. By the way, uh, the silver alert that we told you about yesterday morning for that 20 year old out of Nashville, that's since been resolved. They found him safely, so some good news there, but this one's still very much active here this morning. 625 is your time when I get you out the door. 
with your bus stop forecast. Uh, for those of you who are getting the kids ready for their day back at school, by 7 o'clock, looking at 36 degrees, warming up to 37 by 8 o'clock. I know most kids are already in school by about that time, uh, but if you're going to be out a little bit later this morning, around 9, warming up nicely to 42 degrees. A little bit of a breeze, though. You can see the winds 7 or 8 miles an hour, making it feel just a little bit cooler than that air temperature, uh, but definitely warmer this morning uh, than what we've seen earlier this week. Let's check in on Sierra Clear Traffic right now with Justin McFarland. All right, Sierra Clear Traffic, let's go to I-65 at Highway 96 uh, down there in Williamson County. That is where we are dealing with uh, that crash right there on 65 and crews are on the scene trying to deal with it and moving traffic over just a little bit there and it is causing small and I mean really small delays. Let's take you down there. Uh, you can see where it is right there at the exit uh, on I-65. You can take Highway 31 if you would like to steer clear or Highway 397 will also help you get around a little bit, but in all honesty, not causing that big of a deal. All right, Justin, thank you very much. A quick reminder, as we see the sun coming up over Nashville, we're always your live local news source that has you covered through 9 a.m. And as we go through the course of this morning, like every weekday morning, we will see some updates in the tracking of our storm system. So we'll join Greg here in moments to see what's popping. Fame. You're watching Fox 17 News This Morning, your code red station. Good morning, 6.30 on the dot. Look at that sunrise down on Lower Broadway. A live look from Nashville this morning. We do have a code red weather alert in effect for tonight into tomorrow. High winds, heavy rain expected, but a gorgeous start to this Thursday morning here from Lower Broadway. And keep an eye on steer clear traffic for you. The latest developments as we've got a crash that Justin's following. We'll make sure you can get around this safely in moments. Thank you so much for joining us here for Fox 17 News this morning. Glad to be here to kick off your 6.30 half hour. I'm Jennifer for Waddell. Eric is off today. Let's get started right now with Greg, our Code Red meteorologist who is tracking all of the updates in this Code Red weather alert. And oh boy, do we have a lot of updates here for a lot of moving parts in the next four or five days. So I'm going to start you off here with what's going to happen in the next 36 hours. Rain returns tonight, damaging wind for your Friday. That is why the red lights are on. That is why we are Code Red. We were earlier in the week. We anticipated power outages. We anticipated down power lines and poles and also damage to trees and uprooted trees. All of that happened Monday night into Tuesday. This timing is different. This wind, just as strong as what we saw Monday night, will move through during the daytime when many more of us are out on the road trying to go from point A to point B. Kids are in school, bus stops later in the day for many folks here. So keep that in mind. The timing is way different. 55 mile per hour wind gusts can't be ruled out. Then we'll talk in a little bit about the Arctic blast that comes in Sunday into Monday. But here's that weather maker. Your Thursday, beautiful. We're going to be 57 degrees and sunny. We're in the 30s right now on the right side of your screen. So off to a pretty nice start here on this Thursday morning. This is 11 o'clock. Nothing happens except for cloud cover picking up this evening after sunset. Here's 3 a.m. 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. Rain begins to move in tomorrow morning. Not all that bad the first couple of hours if you're up nice and early, but by 7 to 9, the rain moves in much more quickly. Tracking throughout 7 to 9, rain moving into the area. This is a brand new update. It slows down the biggest and heaviest band of rainfall to a little bit later in the morning, 11 o'clock to noon, and then 1 o'clock that passes through. When that is happening, the strongest wind moves in, and that wind is going to be noticeable, very noticeable. We're going to have wind gusts that will be upwards of 55 miles per hour right in the middle of the day. We'll only get about a half inch of rain, so less rain this time around. Steer clear traffic for you this morning. Let's get out to I-65 and Highway 96 as you make that drive down uh, from the Franklin area. This is uh, right at uh, exit 65 there uh, through Williamson County. Uh, traffic can get by. It's not causing big delays, just minor ones at best. Uh, you want to take Highway 31, you can, but if you just want to stay on 65, you can do that as well. Here is your drive coming in from the Antioch area. This is going to be I-24 at Old Hickory Boulevard as you make that drive in through Cane Ridge. As the sun is starting to come up here, uh, this is going to get busy as more and more people start to head out near Cambridge High School. We're going to give you the latest drive times we've got coming up in a few. 
Justin, thanks. At 633 right now, Operation Crime and Justice and a scary situation unfolding in the heart of downtown Nashville for two young women. If you look at your screen right now, Metro Police tell us the man that you see is the man they're looking for. His name is Myron Hughes, and they say he robbed two women who he picked up for an Uber ride. Again, happening in the heart of downtown Nashville, according to the police report, those two women, ages 22 and 24, specifically requested a woman to come pick them up through the Uber app. Well, when the car showed up, it matched the Uber car description, but police say it was Myron Hughes driving, not a woman. And they say that Hughes told those young women the driver, the woman, was sick. As the ride continued, police say that he claimed he was lost and pulled over. Officers say that's when he pulled out a gun and demanded that the women get out of the car and leave everything behind. Their purses, their wallets, their phones, everything. Well, they did what he said and then he drove off, according to police. Those victims, though, eventually able to get help and call police. So if you have seen this man, if you know anything about him, please contact Nashville Crime Stoppers. We go to Antioch this morning now where one person has critical injuries after an overnight shooting. It happened on Schoolhouse Court. Now, police have not been able to give us a whole lot of details yet, but you could see we were there on scene with them. They said nobody's in custody as of now, um, but as we get those updates, we'll be bringing them to you here live through 9. We've been talking so much about the weather this week nationwide and of course here at home we've got a lot of people without power in really cold weather after heavy rain and high winds have pummeled parts of the country. We've got some places that are dealing with massive flooding. Fox Weather's Katie Byrne with a comprehensive update this morning. High water trucks going street by street in this New Jersey community on Wednesday, helping residents escape rising floodwaters. Officials say some basement apartments here in Lodi took on at least a foot of water during Tuesday's storm. I didn't think it was going to get as bad as it did because I, when, I, when I was checking every night, all night. And more could be on the way. The National Weather Service says New Jersey's Passaic River should crest on Thursday, even as nearby residents clean up from last month's flooding. If you come across a roadway that is uh, blocked off or appears to be closed, please do not drive on that water because the vehicle is going to get stuck and then the first responders are going to have to go out there. The cleanup is also underway throughout the rest of the eastern U.S. Utility crews are out in full force restoring power to thousands of homes and businesses that lost power during the storm. New York and Pennsylvania seeing the most outages. We have over 400 high voltage resources, additional uh, vegetation crews from outside of Long Island, over 100, and additional wire watches and damage assessments as well. While in the southeast, the National Weather Service is sending teams to multiple states on Wednesday and Thursday to survey damage from suspected tornadoes. One moment it was a little brain, little breeze, and the next moment just big gust of wind came through. Forecasters expect the eastern U.S. to get hit with more rain and wind this weekend. In Lodi, New Jersey, Katie Byrne, Fox Weather. 636 is your time. We have a food truck on a mission to celebrate Colombian food and culture here in the Mid-State. Dennis Ferrier with that story on how they're able to make a big change for Mount Juliet business owners along the way. My late father-in-law lit up. Good morning. Time right now is 639. Looking at your forecast here going forward. Today, not a bad day for us by any means here when it comes to the forecast. Starting off in the 30s, you can see the sun starting to come up here, beaming off the skyline. We're going to have tons of sunshine today. We're code red for late tonight and especially for your Friday. That's when the bulk of our weather is going to really change quickly. Breezy today, a little bit of a breeze on and off. Not that bad. 5, 10 mile per hour wind speed. Tomorrow we'll have wind gusts upwards of 55 miles per hour. We're going to do that again. We're going to bring in a very aggressive weather maker. The feels like temperatures, I would go as far as to say they're mild right now compared to where we're going to be in about six days. Nighttime temperatures will be in the single digits to start next week. So maybe you're an outdoor runner. We're going to have to close shop on outdoor running here starting tomorrow with rain and then with cold temperatures in the morning into next week. So take advantage of this morning. 
Temperatures in the 30s to low 40s by 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock. Now we've talked about it, 3 a.m. until noon tomorrow. Best rain chance, best wind chance going to be 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We have to talk winter weather. That cold air I'm talking about, it moves in on Sunday into Monday. We're talking about the word snow. We're talking about dangerous cold. We're going to break all of that down coming up in the next check of your forecast. Greg, I'm just really glad to hear that we should not have that major wind event overnight tonight. Yes. It rattles our dogs, right? Oh, and then of makes it, does. it hard to sleep. So, all right, we'll see that tomorrow morning. Steer clear traffic right now. Well, let's get a live look to see how things are uh, shaping up here on the interstates. We've got this situation I 65 near Highway 96. Uh, so, not a high impact. We can see a little bit of a brake check as folks are coming by, but again, not anything that's going to require a detour. This looks to be the worst of it right now in steer clear traffic. We'll keep our eye on the road for you as always, though, and break in the moment we've got something where you're going to have to steer clear. And uh, breaking news right now, as a matter of fact, from the sports world, the New England Patriots and Bill Belichick are parting ways after 24 seasons, six Super Bowl championships, uh, according to multiple sources this morning. In fact, just moments ago, Fox News and ESPN breaking the story. This all comes after uh, Mr. Belichick addressed the media Monday after the Patriots lost to the Jets at home, saying it was way too early for any decisions. That was Monday. Here we are Thursday, and the decision has come down. By the way, uh, the coach had one year left on his contract, and NFL sources say he wants to continue coaching and could be drawing interest from at least some of the seven NFL teams that have current head coaching vacancies, including our Tennessee Titans. Now, his name has not been mentioned so far as one of interest, but... Who knows? Uh, he's wrapping up his tenure with a 266 win, 121 loss record. Hope your Thursday's off to a great start, maybe a short week for some of you. And I know a lot of you will have Monday off for the holiday as well. Uh, but we're glad you're waking up with us. We've got those important Code Red Weather Alert updates for you every five minutes, live through nine. Welcome back to Fox 17 News. We've got you updated in your communities this morning, and we go to Bellevue, where the Bellevue branch of the Nashville Public Library is going to stay closed now through Monday. They have water damage from the storms earlier this week. You know, we had all that rain and the high winds. So their book drop is closed as well during this time. The library is asking you if you typically come to Bellevue, you can return your books or other materials at another branch of the Nashville Public Library or just keep them with you until they reopen. The library is adjusting due dates and they will not charge you overdue fines. So just a big heads up there for you in Bellevue. And this morning, new from the TSA, they have a report on the number of guns that have been confiscated at airport checkpoints over the last year and Nashville making the top five list of airports with the highest number of guns seized. Now, we talk about it here on the morning show when we get the reports from the TSA, but uh, it does turn out that BNA is the fifth airport on this list with the highest number of guns that are caught by TSA checkpoints. In other words, these are people who are trying to bring a gun on a plane in a carry-on. Okay, TSA reports 188 guns confiscated right here in Nashville last year. And when we take a look at the top five, because uh, who's worse than Nashville? Well, uh, the number one airport with the highest number of guns caught at those uh, TSA checkpoints, Atlanta. Then we've got Dallas, Houston, Phoenix, and Nashville rounding out the top five. We have a former Lebanon high school teacher who has now been sentenced for assault charges involving a student and some of these details are sensitive so just want to warn you according to the district attorney general's office michael hargis pleaded guilty and has now been sentenced to six years in prison that sentence is related to charges filed after a relationship with a 14 year old student a spokesperson for wilson county schools confirms that hargis was with the district for four years between 2013 and 2017 he was dismissed as a teacher for something unrelated to this before the sexual assault charges surfaced. We've been talking, as I mentioned just a moment ago, so much about the weather because it's a headline nationwide and another winter storm heading across the U.S. 
It's going to look a lot like the one from earlier this week. And yes, it is going to impact us as we get into next week. That's part of the forecast that Greg is timing out for us. Uh, but this system coming out of the west where Lake Tahoe uh, was hit so hard. In fact, they are still reeling this morning from a deadly avalanche in Lake Tahoe. One person we know has died, several others injured. Well, now those conditions are heading toward the plains and the Midwest. And you know, as we talk about the weather with Greg here, if this storm intensifies enough, it could reach the level of something you might have heard before. We're, we're going to drop the word here, the phrase bomb cyclone. Warmer states likely in for severe thunderstorms, the potential for tornadoes. Looking at this uh, weather map here, you can see even Tennessee was included in there, and that's what Greg's been telling us. Uh, so all of this weather just really having an impact on so many communities. And for the local impacts, so we've got Greg on standby right now to talk about high winds, heavy rain, and then cold temperatures and snow. You just gave F all on the way. Do you, do you want to keep going? Because you just no, gave sir. a fantastic, no, sir. A, fa a fantastic, simple way to explain what's going to happen with all that. <laughs> that is relinquished to you. That well, was fantastic. Now I, I want to give you a little metaphor here for why we don't know how much snow we're going to get yet. Okay, because I, we know a lot of you are asking. Yeah. We know you want to know. I keep, you know, getting asked how much snow, how much right. snow. Right. Um, I look at it like this: if you get one inch of rain, or if I forecast one inch of rain five days from now, mm -hmm. and you end up getting a half inch of rain, you got rain. No big deal. If I forecast one inch of rain, which equals 10 inches of snow, and you end up getting a half an inch of rain, which equals five inches of snow, real big difference. Big difference. So pinpointing those little fine details yeah. here, this is the metaphor. Go ahead, go ahead and take the graphic here. There are four stages of forecasting winter weather when it comes to time. Six to eight days out is like building a puzzle. The first thing you do is you dump out all the pieces and you find the four corners. You start that out here. We're going to start blocking out what we know could potentially happen. Then four to five days that we're at right now, the pattern is more clear. Weather is more or less likely. Now we know it is likely. So we're taking the side pieces and we're completing that outer border of the puzzle. We know what's going to happen in this box. Then we go to two to three days out where we get tomorrow. How should we plan? We determine when, where, and what type of precipitation. We already know snow. That's like putting all the pieces together that are all the same color. And then finally, chunking them together. Day two, one to two days out, we can lock down totals, timing, and impact. That's like putting that final piece in the puzzle and then going, here's the picture, we know everything, here's what's going to happen, and we can plan it before it gets here. So that's how it works when it comes to forecasting uh, winter weather events like snow. Oh, look out your weather window. Weather Window, presented by the National Weather Desk. A snow squall along Utah's Wasatch Front slowed I-15 to a near crawl during Wednesday evening's commute. Cleanup in Cayuga County, New York, after Tuesday night storm packing 50 to 70 mile per hour winds. And the National Weather Service determined an EF2 tornado left behind this damage in Bamberg, South Carolina Tuesday. Winds reached between 120 and 125 miles per hour. Clear, clear traffic, a couple of things to tell you about this morning. Let's get you first out to I-65 and Highway 96. This is out there in the Franklin area. Uh, this is where crews are on the shoulder of the road now dealing with that crash uh, right at exit 65. You can see where crews have got it well in hand, moving everybody over just a little bit, not causing big delays, just something to be aware of. This is something we just picked up that's still out there in the road. This is 65 at uh, the Old Hickory Boulevard area as you make your way in and around the Madison area. You can see Metro Police there along with a car on the shoulder of the road. Minor delays at best. This also looks to be going outbound, so not causing that big of a delay. Justin, thanks. Uh, more headlines from our communities this morning. We have leaders across Tennessee stepping up to protect the music industry, musicians from artificial intelligence. Fox 17 News Peyton Muse joins us from the Country Music Hall of Fame. From songwriters to music producers to even engineers, some of which who've stepped through the doors here of the Country Music Hall of Fame, now hopefully getting the protections they need when it comes to AI technology. This is all thanks to state leaders who introduced a bill. Governor Bill Lee, Senate Majority Leader Jack Johnson, and the House Majority Leader William Lamberth all banning together. Governor Lee introduced a bill called the Ensuring Likeness of Voice and Image Security Act, or the Elvis Act. This bill will ensure no one can rob the magic Tennessee artists create. 
One of those artists, Lindsay L., who's been in the Nashville music community for about 14 years, says the state is setting an example for the rest of the world with this bill. No one wants to hear their voice or see their image taken without permission or used out of context. This landmark legislation will help protect artists against those threats and set the stage for protection nationally and around the world. Tennessee is the first state in the nation to enact a bill like this. Reporting downtown, Peyton Muse, Fox 17 News, Recorded Red Station. Peyton, thanks. Time is 6.52 and a beautiful sunrise to start your Thursday morning. Cotton candy skies over Nashville right now. Uh, we've got your out-the-door forecast, plus, of course, tracking all of the next weather makers coming our way as we get into our 7 o'clock hour. Good morning to you. U.S. Navy ships. Here we are. Good morning. Welcome back. We're getting close to 7 o'clock as we become your only live and local news source through 9. And we're going to have a lot of updates throughout that without or with our upcoming two weather makers and code red days. But right now, Daisy, one of our dogs of the day here sent in by Bethany Miller, chilling at the pool. Yeah, this is a picture from the summer. That's how many dogs I've got to get through. So we're doing more than one a day. Temperature's great. Hey, no working from home. All right, Mike, Dina, no working from home today or at least take some time to go for a dog walk. We're going to be in the middle 50s later on this afternoon. <laughs> the eyes say it all. Literally is that stare. Get off the computer. It is a great day for a dog walk. I was already talking back home about getting out and doing something with my little dog, Obi, later today, because this is the last sunny and warm day we're going to have for the next 7 to 10 days. We get rainy. We're in code red for wind that we'll talk about. I'm going to have a new look at Future Track at 7 o'clock. How do you send your dog as the day? Meteorologist Greg Bobus, the pin post on Facebook. That's where you can find it. Share your name, share where you're from if you want to, and share your dog photo. You'll see it right here on Fox 17 News this morning. Circular traffic for you this morning. Let's go to the north side, I-65 and I-24. You can see it right here for yourself. Of the traffic crawling in there from the north side, from Madison, from Hendersonville, from Goodlettsville. It is a for real slow go there this morning. You want to take Ellington Parkway if you can. That's the best way to steer clear. We are dealing with a crash, and TDOT is maneuvered here, so you can really see it. Uh, this is going to be I-65 right at the Old Hickory Boulevard exit there in Madison. You can see where uh, TDOT is on the scene right now. Now uh, they've hooked up a small chain here so they can tow that uh, small SUV out of the way here and crews can get there and get by uh, with that traffic. You can again use places like Dickerson Bike, Gallatin Road as the best bet to steer clear from there. We'll continue to watch the roads as things get busy into our 7 o'clock hour. Justin, thanks. Hey, check this out for anybody who might be expecting a baby in 2024. You'll want to know the Tennessee Department of Health has just released the top baby names of 2023. So if you're trying to avoid them or you want to go in with the trends, let's take a look at the list just released this morning. Top names for boys, Liam, Oliver, James, William and Noah. William and Liam have been in favorites in Tennessee uh, for years now. And then the top baby girl names for last year, Charlotte, Olivia, Amelia, Emma and Ava. By the way, Charlotte uh, takes the top spot, replacing Olivia, which held the top spot for the last three years. Girl Scout cookie season is back. Have you seen the kids set up at your local grocery store? Well, fan favorites like Thin Mints and Samoas, Tagalongs, all those are coming back. But interestingly enough, we've learned new this year, there will be no new cookie flavors. So just all the OGs coming back um, and a heads up here. You might be paying more for cookies. I know many of you experienced this last year. You were letting us know about it. Here's the deal. The Girl Scouts of America says each council sets their own prices. So it depends on where you live and it depends on your troop as to whether you're going to see higher prices when you go to pay. You need a little coffee. I was thinking earlier this morning when I saw that if you want some coffee to go with those cookies, um, you could get coffee straight from a robot. Now, I know that sounds wild. And when you see the video here, you're going to you're going to agree it looks kind of wild. But there might be people who just want the coffee and no human interaction. So this would be for you. Check it out. It's the robotic barista. Now, what you're looking at here is currently in like a test lab scenario. This is not in an actual store yet, but watch this thing work. What kind of tripped me out this morning was watching its arms. So Adam is the name of the robot created by Rich Tech Robotics. The robot uses a combination of things. So artificial intelligence, cameras, 
facial recognition software. Don't spill it. <laughs> Price tag for the robot, $180,000. So how would that, because you know they're going to pass the price along to us in the coffee. Coffee's already expensive enough. Uh, would you, what do you think? And it's, that thing is huge. I, is it not intimidating? Why did they have to make it so tall? I don't know. How do y'all feel about this? Would you, would you be on board? Hmm. 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 The future is here, folks. Let's head over to our website, fox17.com, and show you what's trending this morning. And I got to tell you, the top trending story is one that really touched our hearts right here on our morning show yesterday, where we brought you the story with Dennis Ferrier of Sweet Jordan's special needs bakery that now needs some special help to keep the doors open. Uh, it is just a heartstring kind of story, such an impact in one of our rural communities of Paris, Tennessee, and it is now, as a result, our top trending story. You can read it anytime by heading to fox17.com. You're watching Fox 17 News This Morning, your code red station. Good morning. We're on a Fox Ooh. 17 code red weather alert, but that is not for right now. Look at your screen. Wow. I'm going to tweet this picture out in just a few minutes. This is a beautiful sunrise from the 30s, 50s later today, but another wind event, stronger wind than the last one coming your way tomorrow. We'll talk about that in the forecast. Yes, yeah, share that picture with us, Greg. Steer clear traffic out there for you this morning. It's not quite as, pic as uh, beautiful as the picture Greg showed us. <laughs> It's I-24 <laughs> Hickory Hollow Parkway, uh, especially for those of, you need to, uh, those of you who need to take this drive in. We're going to tell you about the best ways to make this picture a little prettier coming up <laughs> in just a few. All right, we've got you covered. The Homeless uh, Shelter Committee is meeting today, looking ahead to cold weather along with the progress that they've made. Thank you so much for beginning your Thursday with us here on Fox 17 News this morning. Teams all here for you, ready to go with a code red weather alert. I'm Jennifer Waddell. And I am Justin McFarland, Fox 17 News. Of course, your only live and local news source with you from 7 until 9. And we have gone code red and with good reason. Greg Bob is standing by to talk to us about the high wind and falling temperatures. So many things are going to change in just the next 72 hours. Today, yeah. 57 and sunny. Hmm. 72 hours from now, we'll have nighttime temperatures in the single digits. Ooh. It's the mixed bag of Middle Tennessee. And we're going to cover every part of it for you. <laughs> we'll load that bag up starting right now and give you everything you need to carry with you as you head out the door. Here's the weather story. Rain returns tonight, late tonight into tomorrow morning. We just showed you the sunrise. It is not going to look like that tomorrow morning. We're going to have rain that we're actively tracking as we wake up. Damaging wind possible during the daytime on Friday. Not a nighttime wind event daytime wind event. Wind gusts up to 55 miles per hour, meaning more power outages, more tree limbs and uprooted trees, power poles down. Everything that we saw Monday night into Tuesday could happen again tomorrow. And then we have the kids at the bus stop in the morning that are going to get rained on. And we have the wind when they're getting home later in the day. So a lot of things that make it a code red day. Arctic blast, oh, it's on the way. That change from 57 to single digits happens really quickly. Wind is the big story for what we're code red right now. I'm telling you right now, code red for dangerous cold on Monday and Tuesday. And we do have the potential for some snow. I'm going to use the word in the forecast Sunday into Monday. None of the computer models agree, and I don't agree with any of them myself. So we're going to keep watching this here and fine tune the forecast for hour by hour and also snowfall totals as we get closer to the weekend. Right now, the big story is what happens in the next 36 hours and that wind event that's going to be knocking on our door, quite literally rattling our door tomorrow. Next, check your forecast in a few minutes. Circular traffic for you this morning. Let's take a good look here from I-24 Hickory Hollow Parkway. As you make that drive in from the Tanger outlets, you can see we're in the stop and go phase of the morning. Uh, this is where traffic will speed up. You'll hit good pockets and bad pockets. Uh, but right now, this is one of the uh, better pockets, believe it or not, as you make that drive in. Our uh, drive times are over an hour coming in from Murfreesboro for the time being. This is 65 near Old Hickory Boulevard in the Madison area. We've got a crash here that's on the shoulder, but slowing things up just a little bit. You can always try to take Dickerson Pike or Gallatin Pike as the best bet to steer clear about each of us as members and a speaker who is drunk with power. 
Well, more attention on the House floor at the Tennessee House of Representatives as a Nashville Democrat, Justin Jones, was silenced during a full House session on Wednesday morning after he said that the Speaker of the House, Cameron Sexton, was drunk with power. This follows the adoption of new rules allowing the Speaker to silence lawmakers found to be out of order. Now, the new House silencing rule also bans members from using papers as well as visual aids in order to explain legislation. It also limits the comments during bill presentations to five minutes. Several members we spoke with on both sides say that this controversy has distracted the House from being able to pass new laws. Unfortunately, there are some that all they want to do is disrupt and what they would coin as resist. And they're not getting any legislation passed. We keep through passing a bunch of unconstitutional legislation with little to no debate, and that's wrong. Now, Representative Garrett, who you heard from first there, says that someone is uh, silenced. If someone is silenced, they are silenced for the rest of the day. So please keep that in mind. Now, Jen, we know that Justin Jones is one of the Tennessee Three, mm -hmm. the group of lawmakers who joined forces last spring shortly after the Covenant shooting, and they were all, well, two of them at least, expelled from the Tennessee House. Right, Justin Jones and Justin Pearson both expelled Gloria Johnson hanging on to her seat. But to your point, Justin, this is nothing new, no. right? This is something that was well documented right here on Fox 17 News all last session. So the Tennessee Three, as they were called, Pearson, Jones, and uh, Gloria Johnson, all violated house floor rules during the session. They were leading protesters during a gun control debate after the Covenant shooting. They were using bullhorns uh, to be, as most people who were witness to all of it, would say, intentionally disruptive. So lawmakers voted to expel Justin Jones and Justin Pearson, as I mentioned, Gloria Johnson, hanging on to her seat, though, by a single vote. I walked up to the well because you were pushing my people back. We brought a megaphone because you cut our people off and you cut their representatives off from the microphone time after time after time after time after time again. Now, on the other side of that argument is those who say our lawmakers can't get anything done for the people of Tennessee with all of this disruption. Pearson and Jones both reelected to their seats during a special election last fall, which we told you about. Um, and so they were also able to participate in the special session on gun reform. Justin. Switching gears now to the high cost of homelessness this morning, uh, the Continuum of Care for Homelessness Planning Council Shelter Committee meeting is later this morning. I know that's a mouthful, but they do a lot of things over there. Fox 17 News, Peyton Muse, live for us this morning just outside of the City Road Chapel United Methodist Church to tell us exactly what they're going to be talking about. Good morning, Justin. So people should start funneling in here in about an hour and a half, and the committee has a full agenda. They've even listed off some of the things that they're on track for and some of the things that they're not on track for. And looking ahead to next week's cold snap, the shelter committee says locations for the shelter and the rollout for the winter shelter plan is completed. It's done. Some of the things that they're addressing is their review, their review of the revised encampment plan which the committee says that they're on track for as we've reported the hermitage homeless camp is closing soon and the office of homeless services says those living in the camp should have their housing arrangements by decided by the end of the month and some of the notes from the committee's agenda says their inflow and outflow issues with the camp plans the encampment plans is off track along with the document ready barriers addressing and solving those issues are also off track and once this meeting gets started as soon as we're done we'll go inside and we'll let you know later on exactly what they've discussed and some of the progress and some of the plans that they have to put things back on track reporting live in madison peyton muse fox 17 news recorded station Thank you, Peyton. Well, turning down the temperature at the state capitol, we're going to show you two lawmakers on both sides who say they want things to be more civil, but words are easier than actions. We're going to show you how they plan to try to move forward. Hello, I'm Commissioner Mar 
710 is the time and day three of the Tennessee House and Senate will get started a little bit later today. And there has been lots of protests and very loud speeches during the first two days. We just showed you some of that where some of the members were silenced for and for just a moment on Wednesday, two lawmakers in particular, one Democrat and one Republican, tried to express an effort to get beyond the noise and have an actual real conversation. You're gonna hear from Representative William Lambreth and Representative Vincent Dixie. Both of them represent Middle Tennessee districts. Both of them have very different political ideas, but both of them are trying to be heard and they can be difficult. If it's not important enough for you to sit here and listen to someone that's it's very important to them to, to have an explanation or to make a comment about it, if it's not that important to you, then you should leave. I, no one forced any of us to take this job. We took it because we wanted it. And I think that our job is to get it right and take time. This is not a game. This is extremely important service for all of us. This expands debate opportunities to all and, and specifically, quite frankly, to the minority party. It, it helps that voice be heard equally on certain bills um, because we have heard from some that that had not occurred in the past. So I want to make sure that it does. And I think that's a goal for all of us is to make sure that all voices are heard in this chamber. Well, keep in mind, this debate happened before the new rules on debate were adopted. We'll see what happens as the day moves forward and they gavel in the brand new day starting at nine o'clock. 712, very quick check of your forecast for you here. Just to know what we're going to talk about in about five minutes, we have two weather makers moving in. One is late tonight into tomorrow, rain and wind gusts near 55 miles per hour. We're going to time that in future track. And then also we have the Sunday into Monday cold snap that settles in. Well, it kind of breaks us if you want to talk about it like that when it comes to temperature. Five degrees is the coldest overnight temperature that I have in the next seven days. So here we are right now. I mean, talk about a gorgeous start to the day. The sunrise, beautiful coming up as we speak. We have temperatures that are in the 40s to right near 50 degrees, and we'll be in the 50s later on next or this afternoon. Taking a look at future track, let's time out that first weather maker, the broad strokes of just when the rain moves in and when the wind moves in. All day today, sunshine, nothing to worry about. We get into tonight, 3 a.m. into tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., and then 9 a.m. Between 7 and 9 o'clock, the rain picks up, the heaviest of it coming mid to late morning, and that's also when the wind could be up near 55 miles per hour. Steer clear traffic coming up in just a moment. We're going to tell you about this scene on the north side of town in Madison, plus Tennessee Governor Bill Lee. He is uh, talking with other state leaders and they're launching a new bill addressing the impacts of AI in the music industry. We'll be right back. You get Hughes and Coleman. It Good morning and welcome into Fox 17 News this morning. Time right now is 7.15 and we want to head over to fox17.com and take this opportunity to remind you that's going to be a great place yes. to get school closures as we get into next week with some winter weather approaching. As of right now, we just have one school closure. It's Clay County Schools and they're closed for the rest of the week actually because of so many people being sick. Mm. It is that time of year. And by the way, for those of you who are new to Middle Tennessee yes. and you're thinking, wait a minute, they're they're closing school because people are sick. Yes, it happens around here. It does. Yeah. In fact, they have thresholds, right? Percentages. That is correct. Where they'll look at if they've got a certain percentage of students or teachers who are out sick, they'll close school. They will do it. And it's not just in Clay County. They'll do it in several oh, other yeah. places as well. So we'll keep you up to date, both on air and online with more school closure and delay information. Hey. And by the way, uh, our app will get you that same information. The app will get you uh, weather updates. So a good reminder now, too, to go ahead and get that downloaded. It's free. Greg and our weather team input all that weather info for you. Yeah, we make sure you're getting what's going to actually happen and not just what some algorithm somewhere is telling you is going to happen. You're going to know exactly mm -hmm. what the hour-by-hour temperature is. And the biggest thing for the next couple of days is the radar. All right. So let's dive in right now and take a look what we're going to see. Um, I'm very curious to see what 8 o'clock shows us here when the new drought monitor comes out. So 40, about 45 minutes about or so? About 45 minutes. I'm going to compare okay. it to this map because we have finally had some rain a few times in the last few weeks. And it has been getting worse and worse over the course of the last six months. The area shaded in red, this is last Thursday's map, are still needing more rain. And thankfully, a lot of these areas are going to pick up a little bit more. Future rainfall tonight into tomorrow. We showed you timeline, 3 a.m. through about noon. A half of an inch to three quarters of an inch of rain. Not as much as what we got Monday night into Tuesday, but it'll help. 
Then here's the wind. This is the, I had this set to 10 a.m. tomorrow. All of the areas shaded in brown where all of the lines get very close together. That's the strongest wind. These are the areas where 55 mile per hour wind gusts are possible for a good two to three hour period. Average wind speed will be between 25 and 35 miles per hour. We have to watch out for down power poles. We have to watch out for trees and tree limbs that might be down or might hit wires and knock them down. If you see a, you see a wire anywhere, treat it as a live wire. Call your electric company, make sure that they're aware of where it is at so we can kind of get things moving here. This is gonna happen right in the middle of the day on your Friday, the strongest wind and the heaviest rainfall will be mid to late morning for tomorrow in your Code Red weather alert. Steer clear traffic out there for you this morning. Let's get to the latest happening out there on your roads. Uh, let's get started here. This is going to be I-24 at Hickory Hollow Parkway as you make that drive in from Antioch this morning. As you can see, traffic is moving along just fine other than a lot of stop and go out there on the interstate. So heads up as you get out there this morning, running to a lot of congestion in that area. Here is 65 coming through Old Hickory Boulevard. This is in the Madison area, so heads up there. Last but not least, here we go. Drive times this morning, Hendersonville, 46 minutes, Murfreesboro, 69 minutes, Franklin, 39 minutes coming in from the south side. The congestion is back. And speaking of traffic and congestion, there's a big project on I-65 here in the mid-state that was supposed to ease some congestion. Mm -hmm. That project, we've learned, is now going to be ultimately delayed by a full year. We're talking about the Buckner Road project down in Spring Hill. It was set to open last April. Well, now leaders of TDOT say that interchange in Spring Hill is likely not going to open until at least later this spring. Fox 17 News' Karen Aguilar joins us live to explain exactly why that is. Hi, good morning, Justin and Jen. I want you to walk with me. I know it's a little hard to see past these trees, but that is actually I-65 where the construction was supposed to begin. But as Jen mentioned, it's been pushed back several times already. A TDOT spokesperson tells Fox 17 News that the delays are because of several things, including being able to build on some areas and have permits. To try to curb the delays, they tell Fox 17 that they're getting additional resources to help them with this job. TDOT says that they'll try to have the interstate open by this spring, but of course we don't know that. There have been several delays and this will impact how people get to, to and from work, whether it's easier or, um, or harder. So I'm, I'm sure people are just hoping that this project gets done soon. Reporting live in Springfield, Karen Aguilar, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. All right, thank you very much, Karen. 720 is the time right now. Live look on Lower Broadway. Pause with just a moment with us while we take this all in. In case you missed it, there is a ton of work happening right now on Lower it Broadway. Really is. The cranes up by Merchant. Lower Broadway shut down. You can't even get all the way to the riverfront now. No. So heads up if you're heading down this way. Plus, the city of Mount Juliet is changing their laws in regards to food trucks after being sued by a group of food truck operators. That's according to the Beacon Center of Tennessee. Coming up, our own Dennis Ferrier will take a look at why vendors say they're not going down without a fight. Thursday's Live with Rapper. Good morning, 7.23 is your time. And let's take a look ahead to the end of the weekend and what's gonna end up happening for us here. Probability of snow. What that means is percentages work like this. There's a 65% chance that when this moves through, that we're going to have one inch of snow, Nashville onto the north. I've upped it a little bit since yesterday. Our confidence is growing that we're going to have snow. And the timeline is looking pretty locked down now as far as very late Sunday and then lingering into Monday morning and early afternoon. That's the timeline of when it will be coming down. This will be the very fluffy snow. The kind where you kind of try to pick it up and it falls apart, almost like, you know, just dust because of how cold we're going to be. It won't be that good packing snow. So we're not building snowmen with anything that does fall. But that's just an update, though. The more far north and west we go, the better our chance for snow is going to be. So I've upped my confidence a little bit in the fact that we're going to have it, and it could end up being likely our first accumulation of the year for most of Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky. Taking a look here, cold, that high confidence has been there the entire week. We know that's coming. We're getting it no matter what. Taking a look, the big chill headed our way. Tuesday morning is what I've got queued up for you here. And this is an optimistic 13 degrees. The thing is, a lot of this depends on how much snow we end up getting. If the more snow that we get, the colder we're going to be, and not because the snow is in the ground, but because any sun that we get 
it'll try to melt the snow first and its rays get bounced back up toward the atmosphere so it doesn't warm us up at all. Now, coldest, coldest air of the season, dangerous for your skin. Think frostbite. Limit your time outside. Wind chill will be below zero in some spots. That's a really big thing to watch out for and you can always watch for updates when it comes to weather on Twitter. That's the best place to go because we get you those and we talk about in real time throughout the entire morning, afternoon, and evening. Whenever we're, here, whenever we're here, you'll be able to see it right there. You can also get the Fox 17 Code Red weather app to see that radar in real time, whether it be the rain that moves in tonight into tomorrow or that snow that's going to move in Sunday into Monday. You can see it when you're on the go and maybe try to avoid a couple of pockets that might be out there. All right, will do. Greg, thank you. 725 steer clear traffic. A couple of things to bring to your attention in this steer clear traffic report. First of all, we've got a live look I-65 at Old Hickory Boulevard. Looks like the crash that Justin was following earlier has now cleared. So traffic moving just fine here. I-65 at OHB. Uh, north of Nashville. Now let's go south of Nashville because uh, it's not on I-65, but it's at the interchange with I-65 and Concord Road. We have a crash on Concord that is backing up traffic um, almost to Crockett Road which would be a couple of miles. Uh, folks who are trying to get on I-65 from Concord, I would go ahead and recommend a detour. You know, maybe you go south and get on I-65 at Moores, or maybe you go up north and jump on I-65 um, near OHB in that direction. A couple of options for you. We'll get another look at steer clear traffic in just a few minutes. Stand here in Music City. No robot, no AI creation, no program can come up with a new tune, a new thought, a new story, can come up with something that resonates in my soul. Uh, that is Representative William Lamberth, who was one of several state leaders now stepping in, trying to protect the music industry, music, musicians from artificial intelligence, whether it's writers, producers, singers, all of them, hopefully getting the protections they're going to need with this new age of AI technology. You know, we all saw what happened over the summer last year with the SAG AFTRA leaders um, and the strike because they wanted more protections from AI. Well, here in Tennessee, they're trying to head this off. And Governor Bill Lee, along with Senate Majority Leader Jack Johnson and House Majority Leader William Lambert, who you just heard from, all coming together. Governor Lee introducing a bill that is called the, and stick with me here, it's called the Ensuring likeness, voice, and image security act. That's an acronym for Elvis. Tennessee is the first state in the nation to enact this kind of legislation. The homeless shelter committee is meeting today, looking ahead at the cold weather plans that they have and also checking in on the progress that they've made. You're watching Fox 17 News This Morning, your Code Red station. Waking up at a Code Red weather alert, not for this morning. Gorgeous sunrise, temperatures climbing into the 50s with sun later today, but rain picks up well after midnight tonight. Rough morning commute tomorrow and wind gusts stronger than earlier this week for your afternoon. We're Code Red for Weathermaker for tomorrow. Steer clear traffic on I-24 Hickory Hollow Parkway as you make that drive into town. We're going to tell you about some other things happening coming up with your steer clear traffic. And a warning as it pertains to ride shares here in the mid-state. Stay alert. The man you see here on your screen, according to police, is the man who robbed two women at gunpoint in an Uber. We'll tell you more about the man police are looking for and the details of that case. Just after 7.30 here on your Thursday, January the 10th. Thank you so much for joining us here on Fox 17 News this morning, the 11th. January the 11th, <laughs> I'm Justin McFarland. And I'm Jennifer Waddell. We've got you covered live and local through 9 a.m. And if you've been watching us throughout the course of the morning, you know we are tracking a new Code Red forecast. For those of you who might just be waking up and starting your day with us, we're going to join Greg right now with the newest information as it pertains to the first system we're tracking tonight into tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to get two rounds. Round one does start tonight. This is new. If you're just waking up, this was issued at 2 o'clock in the morning overnight while you were asleep. We have a wind advisory that starts tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. It's not for today. Today, honestly, is going to be really nice. 
57 and sunny. So let's just get right down to what's going to happen tomorrow. Wind gusts, 40 to 55 miles per hour. The wind will be stronger tomorrow than it was Monday night into Tuesday, and this is during the daylight hours. Think late morning into early afternoon. Average wind speed, that hourly average wind speed, 25 to 35 miles per hour during that time span. An advisory means average wind speed, 25 to 39 miles per hour. We're going to be right in that range. Gusts, 40 to 57, right in that range. Now, a high wind warning out toward the Smoky Mountains. You're getting toward East Tennessee. Maybe you're driving that way for the weekend on your Friday. Keep that in mind. The more east we go, the windier we're going to get. And we're going to have the same impacts that we had last time. Down power poles are possible. Branches snapped off trees that could hit power lines. Treat every power line you see that is down as though it is active and call your, electron, your electric service provider to let them know where these outages might be. But we're beautiful for right now. Your seven day forecast, to put it all together, we're going to talk about 3 a.m. to noon. I'm getting a brand new look at future track coming in as we speak that we'll look at in about eight minutes in the next check of your forecast. And then we're gonna start talking about Wednesday into Thursday of next week. We're gonna get out of a very cold period Sunday through Monday and Tuesday. So ebbs and flows, but a very frigid start to next week. We're just beginning to unpack this code red forecast for you and we'll continue to do, do so throughout the morning. Justin. Clear, clear traffic out there for you this morning. Let's get you out to I. Actually, this is going to be Vietnam Vets. Vietnam Vets at Gallatin Road as you make that drive in from Sumner County out there this morning. As you can see, the traffic is moving along just fine. No big problems out there other than typical congestion this time of the day as you get out there on the road. Now, there is one thing that we have been working on, and that is a crash down in the Brentwood area. Here it is on Concord Road right off of I-65 at uh, exit uh, 71 to be exact. And it looks like the crash is right around Concord Road and Lipscomb Drive, so heads up in that area. You may have a tough time getting to 65 itself. 734 right now, and Metro Police are on the lookout for a rideshare driver who is accused of robbing two women at gunpoint early Sunday. Now, police confirmed to Fox 17 News that the man you see behind us here, this is 44-year-old Myron Hughes, was driving those two young women from downtown Nashville to Nolensville when police say he showed a gun and demanded the 22 and 24 year old women get out and leave everything they owned in the car. Now Hughes is under investigation. If you know where he is, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. Right now, Fox 17 News uh, with more headlines here on your Thursday morning and a big project on a Big interstate now has a big delay. We're talking about the I-65 project along Buckner Road down in Spring Hill. It was supposed to open last April, now delayed until later this year. Let's get out to Fox 17 News' Karen Aguilar, who's live for us this morning with the latest on the project. Good morning, Jen and Justin. I know we're not in the most visual area, but I want you to come with me and I want you to take a look past these trees. That's exactly where the interstate is. That is where a lot of people sometimes deal with traffic. Right now, the traffic is slow, but about an hour or two from now, that might pick up. And what this construction will do is it'll open the way for people to be able to get to work easier. Now, a TDOT spokesperson tells Fox 17 News that the reason for some of those delays are because that they can't build on certain parts of land. And they also tell me that they are having, uh, they are trying to get permits at this moment. Now, to curb some of those delays, the TDOT spokesperson tells me that they are trying to get additional resources for that construction. Now, the interstate is set to open up in spring, but I guess we'll just have to see. Reporting live in Spring Hills, Karen Aguilar, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. Karen, thank you very much. And at 736 now in the high cost of homelessness, uh, there is a planning committee meeting set for today that's going to address how we help those who are in need, but also yeah. uh, not just right now, but looking to the future and what that's going to look like for Nashville as far as uh, when it comes to housing those who are homeless. Well, let's get out to Fox 17 News, Peyton Muse, who's live for us this morning, just outside of where that meeting is going to take place to tell us exactly what they're going to be talking about. Good morning, Jen and Justin. So I'm at City Road Chapel United Methodist Church, and in about an hour, people should start funneling in here for this homeless shelter 
committee meeting and they have a whole bunch on their agenda today. They also have things that they are on track for and things that they may not be on track for. So they will be addressing that today as well. And looking ahead to next week's cold snap, the weather sh or the shelter committee says locations for the shelter and the rollout for the winter shelter plan is completed. That's done. Some of the things they're addressing is they're reviewed their review of the revised encampment plan, which the committee says that they're on track for. As we've reported, the Hermitage Homeless Camp is the latest camp to close, and the Office of Homeless Services says those living in the camp should have their housing arrangements done and decided by the end of the month. Some of the notes from the committee's agenda says they're going to address today the inflow and outflow issues with their camp plans because they say that that is off track along with the document ready barriers. So that could be for the homeless people, their documentation that they need. Um, and they're going to also address some of the goals that they need to get through for when it comes to housing for those experiencing homelessness and how they can get the documents easily and f in a quicker fashion. Reporting live in Madison, Peyton Muse, Fox 17 News, your code red station. All right, Peyton, thank you so much. Well, guns in the Nashville International Airport where they do not belong. We're going to tell you just how many guns have been confiscated in 2023. And the coldest air of the season expected to arrive Sunday into Monday, along with our first chance of accumulating snow. Greg Bobas, our Code Red meteorologist, tracking your next weather makers. Breaking news right now into the Fox 17 newsroom. We've just learned Jelly Roll is taking on Washington, D.C not Dennis Ferrier. So if we can show you the tweet here coming in to us right now from the U.S. Senate Banking and Housing uh, Committee, we understand Jelly Roll, the famous Nashville country music star, is slated to talk about his experiences this morning with communities that have been impacted by the opioid crisis. And he's also going to talk about his own personal struggles with addiction. So Jelly Roll taking on D.C. That Senate committee meeting starts at 10 o'clock this morning. Let's get to your code red weather alert this morning and tell you about what we're tracking and, and what we're tracking here on Friday is going to be a lot of rain and wind moving its way here to the mid state. Some of that wind is going to be very, very strong, very similar to what we saw just a few days ago. Uh, some of those gusts could top 50 miles per hour or so. And then Sunday into Monday is when the real show begins. That is when the Arctic cold is going to come in. It is going to have some snow with it. It's not going to be serious, according to Greg. He's going to give you more details, but we can tell you that the Arctic cold is going to include single digit temperatures with the wind chill below zero. Greg's got the details coming up in a few. And here's your steer clear traffic report right now. One to focus on our commuters coming in this morning from Sumner County, especially if you are in Hendersonville or Gallatin and you use Vietnam Veterans Boulevard. This is the current backup uh, Vietnam Veterans at Gallatin Allison. Pike. And so we can see the congestion. What we're not able to see is any kind of serious crash causing the congestion. Now, if we were to look over an I-65, there's a police officer that has a tractor trailer pulled over but it would be hard to imagine that's causing this. So perhaps just that stop and go and a lot of extra congestion with everybody back to school and back to work. It looks like your current drive time at last check from uh, Hendersonville is close to 50 minutes. New information this morning, and it's about firearms that have been found at our nation's airports. It would seem that the number is going up to an all-time high in 2023. In 2023, the nation's airports have found more than 6,700 guns. You can see it right there, found at our nation's airports. This is an all-time record for the TSA. And they say 93% of those guns that were found were loaded. Now, the top on the list was the city of Atlanta with 451 guns found. But Nashville, not far behind, 188 guns found at BNA. Again, they are asking that you cannot have those loaded guns or any kind of guns in your checked uh, luggage or in your, uh, your, in your bag that you're carrying onto the plane with you. You have to put it into your checked bags, and there are lots and lots of ways to do that and rules to follow before you can. 
You know how they say you can't fight City Hall? Well, don't tell that to food truck operators here in Middle Tennessee. And never say that in front of the Beacon Center of Tennessee. Fighting City Hall, next. Gordon hits the road to... Smart. 746 is the time main event it's opening its third location in tennessee now previously we told you about the new building that is set to open on january the 7th the correct date is actually february the 7th so if you have never been before you look forward to their signature food and drinks and state-of-the-art bowling lanes and a lot more main event in murfreesboro is located at 1510 Gresham Park Drive. So let's let's check in. We are all back together. All right. Is wind again? I've been using this graphic way too much this week. But the next weather maker is wind that's going to move into the area. And this time we're flipping the timeline completely. Monday night was the wind event early. Now it's going to be Friday afternoon. Get outside today. I don't care what you're going to do. Even just stand outside and enjoy 57 degrees in sunshine because we're done with that after today. The entire day sunny. Here's when things change. 11 o'clock, clouds begin to move in. By 3 a.m., a few isolated rain showers track into the forecast. This is when the bulk of the rain moves in. Unfortunately, 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock, we start getting into some of the heavier and more consistent rainfall. 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock, morning drive time bus stop for the kids, and then the heaviest rainfall tracks through the metro between 9 o'clock and noon, and that is when the wind will be the strongest. Wind gusts upwards of 55 miles per hour with heavy rain coming down very quickly could mean another round of power outages. Could mean more down power poles and lines and even some uprooted trees in some areas, and this can be during the day when we're driving around town, so be very careful if you have to leave the house tomorrow between about 9 o'clock and two o'clock in the afternoon. Not a whole lot of rain, less than last time. About a half of an inch, two thirds of an inch. That's pretty much it. But here's the wind. I have this set to 10 a.m. tomorrow. The closer the lines are together and the darker. I mean, really, there are brown shades on here. That means that wind gusts easily could be up to 55 miles per hour right in the middle of the day. There's clear traffic out there for you this morning at 7. Look here at Vietnam Veterans Boulevard as you make that drive down from Sumner County. This is where uh, traffic is moving, but it's moving slowly. Okay, listen. Sumner County is one of the fastest growing communities here in Middle Tennessee. And uh, Vietnam Veterans Boulevard is the main way that people use to get in and out of there. And now that all of everyone is back in school, the private schools are back, the public schools are back, everybody's going back to work. Uh, this is going to be the uh, sort of the norm as you crawl your way in there this morning. You can try to use Main Street, Gallatin Pike, Nashville, uh, Pike, whatever you want to call it. It's the same road and it's still going to be slow no matter what you do. So please just keep that in mind, factor it in before before you leave work uh, before you leave the house for work or school this morning you know and speaking of the bypass uh, we have some yeah. new updates on construction that will not be happening there uh -oh. we've got that for you at fox17.com right mm -hmm. now though we go to the farrier files the city of mount juliet taxing food trucks to the tune of a hundred dollars a day that is a tax that is so overwhelming to these mom and pop operations it is threatened to put them out of business but the nonprofit beacon center deciding to fight back on their behalf and take Mount Juliet to court. Now the Beacon Center has never lost a court case and Fox 17 News Dennis Ferrier shows us in this Fox 17 News investigate story that the undefeated record still stands. The lawsuit accuses Mount Juliet of unconstitutionally stopping food trucks from making a living in that city. Apparently Mount Juliet knew it had a problem because it changed the law before the lawsuit saw a single minute in court. This is Chivanada the brightly colored school bus turned food truck from East Nashville's David Yarzagray. I took a trip to Colombia, visited my grandmother down there, and I just got a lot of inspiration. I was wanting to start a business, and I was inspired by the food, the art, the culture, and it kind of coalesced with my love of making food. We decided to start a food truck that just kind of celebrated Colombia. Light, airy, and crisp empanadas with some really unusual fillings. The food truck debuted during COVID all over the mid-state in subdivisions just like this. One of those places, Mount Juliet. But when the COVID crisis ended, so did the welcome. Mount Juliet decided to charge food trucks outside of Mount Juliet with a $100 a day permitting fee. 
Just so you know, most cities charge $100 to $150 a year for a food truck license. We feel that that's, that's fair and we don't have any problem paying that. But $100 a shift is really difficult for the economics. We might make four or six hundred bucks tonight. It's not like we're making a ton of money, right, in, in, in our total revenue. So if you pay a hundred bucks, that's the whole margin. It might be more than that, right? It becomes unprofitable. That's when the Beacon Center of Tennessee jumped in and sued Mount Juliet on behalf of the food trucks for nothing less than a constitutional violation. When Fall, lead counsel for the Beacon Center. It crossed the line because the Constitution protects individuals against discriminatory government actions. And here... Uh, they were not just treating out-of-city food trucks differently, they were treating them vastly differently. Let's be honest, sometimes cities get away with these kinds of ordinances because what small business has the resources for a long legal battle with City Hall? Without the Beacon Center and without their resources, there is no way we would have even considered uh, legal action, right? Because we can't afford it. It's not even in the realm of possibility for us. The Beacon Center is a free market public policy think tank that backs up its policies and beliefs with legal action, representing Tennesseans for free when they feel small business people or citizens are being treated unfairly by government using unconstitutional rules, regulations, or laws. Let businesses operate. Let businesses earn a living. Let consumers decide uh, which businesses they want to go to. It's not the government's job to pick winners and losers. It's the consumer's job to decide where they want to eat. Dennis Ferrier joins us uh, right now. Interesting story here, uh, Dennis. And you said the city made this decision themselves. And when I say the city, you mean the mayor and the yeah, board it's a of city, commissioners. City ordinance, okay. right? And, and it was aimed to target people coming from outside of the city limits. Right. So what you're doing is saying, hey, you know, uh, anybody out of Mount Juliet, we're going to take care of our Mount Juliet guys and, and that. But, you know, you can't do that. That's unconstitutional. Ah. And it never even saw the light of day because, the, you know, they knew it was wrong I'm, and it had to take it down. I mean, you just I can't just, do that. Yeah. You can't mm -hmm. interfere with people's attempts to make it's a living a and that's money. what the beacon center does you know they they just beat nashville up and down the street on the sidewalk thing oh right remember because right, they the, were trying to make you pay for your sidewalk when exactly. you build oh, your house in and, new construction and right yeah. and that's not that's not the sidewalk fun i remember that yeah yeah, oh, yeah. and then on and on and it's always something crazy like that and the that's beacon why center. the beacon center doesn't lose you know when they did the, continues they did the the hair braiding the traditional african hair braiding they tried to make those people go to cosmetology school and get a license yeah. mm -hmm. right. and the Beacon Center went and kicked their butt as wow. well and said, no, this is not a cosmetology issue. Mm -hmm. You just want licensing fees. They just chalked up another win. All right. Yeah, undefeated, untied, Thank you, unscored Jeff. upon. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, all of those things sports related, the end of the Nick Saban era is upon us. We're going to tell you about the huge change in store for the University of Alabama as they say goodbye to what some people are calling the GOAT. A couple years ago, I ended up in the motor. 757, taking a look here. And if you like the 57 sunny, sunny day we have later on today, 57 degrees in sunshine, you're not going to like what happens next week. Arctic blast of air moves in for pretty much a good third of the country. Now, Minneapolis could be as cold as 13 degrees below zero. Nashville, we're going to be in the single digits for low temperatures. Easily the coldest weather so far this season. Now, first snowfall accumulation, I'm fairly confident that the majority of us are going to see it. The question still is, how much will we get? And I can tell you about a 70% chance that we're going to have an inch of snow on the ground, Nashville on north and west. Will we get more than that? We've got to watch it as it moves in. I'm, we're all going to get the dangerously cold, though. And when I say dangerously, I mean the wind chill could be below zero a few hours very early in the morning. That means that if you have exposed skin for more than about 10, 15 minutes, you could start getting the little onset of frostbite on the fingertips. We do not want that to be the situation here. So make sure that we are covering up, we are layering up next week. We're code red for two weather makers. The first one arrives tomorrow, and we'll give you that timeline when it comes to wind and rain and continue to dive into the cold and snow for next week. 
Still clear traffic. A couple of things to show you here. We're going to get started here with the backup on Vietnam Vets at uh, Gallatin Road. As you can see, the traffic is moving, moving a little slow out there, but we're getting a better idea of uh, some of the other things happening, uh, and that is because of the, uh, well, now it's gone. Uh, there was a situation happening on 65 uh, in regards to a state trooper and a truck that was out there a few moments ago, but it is now out of the way, so no more problems there on the north side, so hopefully things will start to ease up. Just a couple minutes before 8 o'clock right now, and it is no secret that here in Tennessee, we love a good football game. Mm. So, shocking news in the college football world, especially the SEC, as Alabama's legendary head coach, Nick Saban, announced yesterday he's retiring. Now, this morning, what we've been following is the fallout, all the speculation of who, Absolutely. who could be next, and your reaction to the news. ESPN's Chris Lowe first reported this, and Nick Saban is considered by many to be the greatest fo college football coach of all time. So we want to know, what do some of you think about that? Can Alabama win the national championship with Nick Saban gone? 53% of you say no, no they cannot. Uh, and that's out of just 178 people voting uh, right now. So you can scan that QR code and then um, you can make your voice heard yourself over on our X page mm -hmm. at uh, Fox Nashville is how you find us. Uh, Plus, there's plenty more to react to here, including oh, what yeah. some of our viewers are saying. Oh, for sure. This. Over on our Facebook page, y'all are blowing it up with comments. So let's read a few of them here. George Centerfit said, I'm a Georgia fan, but this man was a great coach. So good luck on your retirement. Shirley Riddle said it just won't be the same. I got a giggle out of this one earlier this morning when I first saw it. Douglas said, if I was worth 60 mil and I was 72 years old, I'd be retiring too. <laughs> He's undercutting it if he thinks Nick Saban is worth $60 million, $60 million, you know. That's, that's a little That'd be under. a low ball. It's a little under. Our 8 o'clock <laughs> hour starts right now. You're watching Fox 17 News This Morning, your Code Red station. We're in a Code Red weather alert leading ourselves into tonight and especially tomorrow. Another windy, rainy event that could bring down power lines and do many other things to really highly impact your Friday coming up in your Code Red forecast. Steer clear traffic this morning, Vietnam Veterans Boulevard as you make that drive in. Things are slow-ish. We're going to tell you the best way to steer clear of anything getting in your way. The Homeless Shelter Planning Committee is meeting today, looking ahead to the colder days on Monday and Tuesday, and we'll tell you uh, a little bit more about that, along with checking in on their progress on how they're doing so far this year. All right, thank you so much, and thank you for joining us here on Fox 17 News this morning, just after 8 o'clock on this Thursday morning. I'm Justin McFarland. I'm Jennifer Waddell. We're so glad to be your live local news source, always here for you through 9 a.m., and we have our Code Red meteorologist Greg Bobas here to give us all the updates, both uh, to the next immediate weather maker, yeah. which moves in tonight. That's why we're in the Code Red. Yes. And then, of course, the winter system for next week and everything in between. You told us in the seven o'clock hour, Greg, that you were gonna get an update this hour on drought conditions. Which should be coming in any minute here. Okay. So we're gonna compare when it comes in. You know, sometimes it's 801, 802. Sure, sure, sure. But in about 10 minutes, we'll, okay. we'll compare if we've got any relief with, with the rain that we have had that has come down. And I do not want to undersell what is going to happen tonight into tomorrow. I know all eyeballs are on the cold and they're on the snow and what's going to happen going the next week, but it is going to be very windy and it could be a very tough afternoon to get through tomorrow when it comes to wind, potential power outages, and just whatever is in your yard right now. Were you that person who was playing the scavenger hunt earlier in the week and trying to find your patio furniture? Even windier tomorrow. So say you leave for work and the wind's not that bad and you're just driving through the rain to get there. While you're at work, the strongest wind gusts are going to be from about 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Rain returns late tonight after 3 a.m. That leads to the damaging wind. We will get to the Arctic blast of cold and potential snow. We gotta work through them one at a time. We're gonna start with the wind and the rain and then we will work through Sunday into Monday when we just drop the bottom out of temperature. We're gonna go from 57 degrees today, 58 tomorrow, to five below going into next week is the low temperature. So a big change very quickly. But look at that outside right now. Enjoy today. Find an excuse to get outside for any reason you can because today is the best day we'll see in at least the next 10. To now I'm even looking ahead to 14 days. 57 degrees, mainly sunny. Tomorrow, 58. That rain moves in. It will be an impact to your morning. We'll talk potential wind gusts and that big timeline for it. That's the next check of the forecast and future track. And we will look at that drought monitor and see if we've had any relief 
week to week when it comes to just needing some rain. Steer clear traffic for you this morning. Let's take a good look at what we are facing out there at I-24 Waldron Road. Making that drive in from Laverne, things are a bit slow. So let's get a look at your drive time here as you make that drive in. 47 minutes right now from Hendersonville. 70 minutes or just about an hour and 10 minutes in from Murfreesboro right now. 39 minutes coming in from Franklin. No major accidents to tell you about on the interstates. This is congestion at its finest. Just a lot of your friends and neighbors getting on the road at the same time, and that causes things to slow down. It's about each of us as members and a speaker who is drunk with power. Well, more tension on the House floor at the Tennessee legislator. This is as the Ten Tennessee Nashville Democrat Justin Jones was silenced during the full House session on Wednesday after he says that the speaker was drunk with power, as you just heard. This follows the adoption of brand new rules, allowing the speaker to silence lawmakers found to be out of order. Now, the new House silencing rule also bans members from using papers and visual aids to explain legislation and limits comments during the bill presentations to five minutes. Several members we spoke with on both sides say this controversy is a distraction from the House conducting its business. Unfortunately, there are some that all they want to do is disrupt and what they would coin as resist. And they're not getting any legislation passed. We keep through passing a bunch of unconstitutional legislation with little to no debate. And that's wrong. The representative Garrett, who you heard from first, says that if someone is silenced, they cannot be heard from for the rest of that particular day. Well, as we bring in Jim Waddell, we know that Representative Justin Jones of Nashville is one of the Tennessee three. Mm -hmm. That was that group of lawmakers who um, had a big, big spring just a year ago. This is after the Covenant uh, mass shooting took place. Yeah. And now they're in the news yet again, it would seem. Well, I mean, that's part of, of their pitch, right? I mean, they are trying to bring attention to themselves and what they see to be their cause. I mean, Justin Jones, Justin Pearson, Gloria Johnson, all three of them, the so-called Tennessee Three, even went to the national news networks to bring attention to Nashville and, and what was going on here. But in, in case you weren't here for it or you just need a refresher, the Tennessee Three were the ones who led protest inside the state capitol last year, uh, trying to call for change, uh, among other things, after the Covenant School shooting. So Jones and Pearson both got expelled. Gloria Johnson held onto her seat by just one vote. Uh, and then Jones and Pearson ultimately would both win re-election to their seats. There are some members of the Tennessee legislature who say this is not doing any good when it comes to trying to pass laws and get something done because they're so distracted with a, a, a bit of a circus that, that follows that they can't get the work done. Let's listen. I walked up to the well because you were pushing my people back. We brought a megaphone because you cut our people off and you cut their representatives off from the microphone time after time after time after time after time again. So again, both Jones and Pearson now back in their seats, along with Gloria Johnson, who was running for a separate office, by the way. Um, but with regard to these new rules that have now been put into effect for this legislative session, the goal all in all is to make sure that these uh, lawmakers who are paid to go there and do a job are able to do that effectively. In the high cost of homelessness this morning, there's going to be a special committee meeting where folks are going to get together and talk about exactly how they're going to try to keep people warm during the cold, cold days ahead. Fox 17 News' Peyton Muse is live for us this morning just outside of where that meeting will take place. Good morning, Justin. So the meeting is here at City Road Chapel United Methodist Church, and people should start funneling in here in a little less than 30 minutes. And there is a full agenda today. They have some things listed that they have noted that they're either on track for or they may be falling off track. And looking ahead to next week's cold weather shelter, the committee seems to be on track. Their plan is completed for the winter. Some of the things that they're addressing is the reviewed the review of the v revised encampment plan which the committee says that they're on track for 
as we've reported previously, the Her Hermitage homeless encampment is closing soon, and the Office of Homeless Services says those folks that are experiencing homelessness in that encampment should have decided their uh, living arrangements, their housing arrangements by the end of this month. And also today, they're going to address some a few things. They say that their inflow and outflow issues with the camp plans is off track. So we'll find out exactly what the status is on that, along with some of the other things that they have on their agenda. Reporting live in Madison, Peyton Muse, Fox 17 News, your credit station. Well, turning down the temperature, we just told you about the big back and forth going on between state lawmakers, but there are a couple who want to turn the temperature down. We're going to hear from both sides of that and about the efforts to increase respect when we come back. Cheers, guys. 8 11 is the time, and day three of the Tennessee House and Senate will get started later today. And there has been lots of protests and loud speeches on the first couple of days. There were also some members who were told to be silent for the rest of the day. We just told you about uh, the representative Justin Jones, who had to have that happen to them. However, there are two lawmakers, one Democrat and one Republican, who expressed an effort for just a moment to try to get beyond the noise and have a real conversation. We are a deliberative body. We're here to debate things. That's what we do. And I think that we should take as much time because what we do here impacts people's lives. And we need to make sure that we get it right and take the time to get it right. So I believe that limiting debate is detrimental to what we have going on right now. Let's think about what we're doing. This is not a game. This is extraordinarily serious. And I have already filed bills this year uh, that will hopefully literally save lives in this state. And I'm sure you, you may have as well already. Well, day three of the session gets started in less than an hour. We'll see where things go from here. Quick check of your forecast here. What's coming your way in about five minutes from right now? The weekend is the pivot point. It's when there's almost nothing happening in the weather, but it kind of transitions us from the 50s that we'll have today and tomorrow into the 20s by Monday and brings in a snow chance. So our, we're code red right now for tonight into tomorrow, late tonight. After 3 a.m. through about noon, decent amount of rain comes down very quickly and that brings in a lot of wind with it as well. Wind gusts upwards of 55 miles per hour. That drops our temperature, brings in cold air. Dry for Saturday, snow late on Sunday. The Arctic air arrives late Sunday into Monday. The bottom drops out in every way, shape, and form when it comes to not just afternoon temperatures in the 20s, but teens for nighttime temperatures. That's the focus coming up here in five minutes. And right now we're gonna get back out on the roadway real quick. Do you live in Spring Hill? Coming up, find out about delay in the construction of the I-65. Fame. Welcome back time right now. It was 8.15 and I promised you just a few moments ago to look at Sunday into Monday and when we get our first really big blast of winter air so far this season, coldest of the season, and there's not even any doubt about it. Single digits for nighttime temperatures. That means you're going to wake up Monday morning, Tuesday morning, and Wednesday morning to wind chills that could be below zero. That is dangerous kind of chill. First accumulation of snow looking more and more likely, so we're going to keep our eyes on that and we'll have a good handle on snowfall totals, potential snowfall totals by the end of the day tomorrow. So going into your weekend, we'll have the game plan ready for you. Dangerous cold though, that's there for sure. And honestly, things keep looking colder and colder. This is Tuesday morning I've got you at. Actual air temperature, if we're lucky in Nashville, stays in the double digits, but most of us will be in the single digits. And dangerous for the skin. Frostbite does not take that long to settle in when you have temperatures that are that close to zero. And first signs of it, tingling of the ends of the fingers. If you get any of that, any numbness, get yourself back inside. Do not use warm water. That could actually hurt and make the process go more quickly. Let them naturally get warmer. Limit time outside. And if you've got to be outdoors, I know a lot of have jobs that are outdoors. Extra layers, gloves if you can, hats, scarves, whatever you can do. Now let's talk snow. Prob probability of one inch of snow. To say it as simply as possible, if you're in the yellow, you got about a two-thirds chance that you're going to have an inch of snow on the ground by the end of Monday. If you're in the orange shading, eh, you probably won't get an inch worth, but you may have your first accumulation of the year, just a little bit shy of the one inch mark. And then if you're down toward our southernmost counties near the Alabama state line, odds aren't looking all that great. Now, I'm saying of having at least one inch of snow on the ground. 
Exact amounts and accumulations we're going to figure out, like I mentioned, by the end of tomorrow. But my confidence in us seeing snow has gone up since yesterday. My confidence in getting cold, it's been there all week. That's not changing. We're going to get the cold no matter what. You can find the updates on Twitter, Greg Bobas WX. You can submit your dogs of the day on meteorologist Greg Bobas on Facebook. On Code Red Days, we typically don't get the dogs of the day as often because we just got to make sure you know what's going on and the impact, so we're just staying safe. One place you can get your information on the go. Maybe you can't get online, but you can... Click the app real quick. You can do that right here by scanning the QR code or go into the app stores, whichever kind of phone you got, whatever kind of device you have. You'll have the Doppler radar on the go this weekend. You'll have the hour by hour forecast. I don't think it's been more important to have the hour by hour forecast in a five day span in quite some time and also that seven day forecast. Speaking of which, here it is. 57 degrees today, 58 tomorrow. Tomorrow's the wind and the rain. Rain moves in again, 3 a.m. to noon. Strongest wind gusts up to 50 mile, 55 miles per hour right in the middle of the afternoon. Stay clear traffic out there for you this morning. Let's get you out to I-24 as you make that drive in from Waldron Road and Laverne. Uh, this is how things look and things are a bit slow as you make that drive in uh, from out in that direction. A lot of congestion taking place out there uh, right now. So heads up on that drive. Other things we're watching include here. Uh, this is going to be on the north side. Uh, this is going to be I-65 at Trinity Lane there. Uh, you can see a disabled vehicle uh, on the shoulder of the road door open. No authorities there as of yet, but that will change soon and slow things down even more. Uh, overall drive times right now coming down from the Hendersonville area. Things around 50 minutes. If you're coming in from Murfreesboro, things still well over an hour. We also have some breaking news coming from Clarksville with mm -hmm. regards to a serious crash that we're going to tell you about here in just a minute. But first, a big project on I-65 in Middle Tennessee is now on a big delay. We have the Buckner Road Interchange down in Spring Hill that was supposed to open April of last year. Well, now leaders with TDOT say this interchange won't open to drivers until at least later this spring. Fox 17 News, Karen Aguilar joins us live uh, down there in the area where the project was supposed to happen to tell us exactly why things are being delayed now. Right. Good morning, Jen and Justin. I want to show you exactly where the I-65 is. It's right there behind me. You don't see a lot of cars going through at this moment, but TDOT says that in different times of the day, in different times of the year, we do see heavy congestion. And that is actually part of the reason why the construction in the I-65 uh, needs to begin but of course as Jen mentioned it has been delayed several times over and over again and even though we are expecting to see it open up in the spring we're hoping that there's not going to be another delay now also as Jen mentioned um, this I-65 would help uh, alleviate some congestion that is connected to Buckner Road. Uh, TDOT also mentioned that it would help the north and south road. So for drivers that are just trying to have an easier time to get to work, this construction is really, really important to keep a watch on. And that's exactly what Fo the Fox 17 News team is doing. We're going to keep, keep a watch on it throughout the year until spring to see if that actually comes to fruition. Reporting live in Spring Hills, Karen Aguilar, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. All right. Thank you very much, Karen. Breaking news in steer clear traffic from Clarksville. We'll take you to Purple Heart Parkway to tell you what's going on. Hey, Toby. Morning and welcome into Fox 17 News this morning where we have breaking news right now from the Clarksville Police Department. They just sent us a picture of this truck that is flipped over on Purple Heart Parkway. This is part of a two car crash that has happened just in about the last 40 minutes. So this is at Bevard Road and Purple Heart Parkway. You can see this truck is blocking uh, in this case the westbound lanes of Purple Heart Parkway. Officers have been able to open the shoulder allowing a little bit of traffic to get by but if you're in Clarksville and you take Purple Heart Parkway, you'll want to find a good alternate route or at least prepare for a delay in your commute. The good news right now, no injuries reported and Clarksville police are telling us that the road should be reopened within the hour. So that's good news. Uh, if we get any more updates, we'll be bringing them to you here live on Fox 17 News this morning. We are in a code red weather alert again, second time this week, and we'll be doing it again next week. And we talked a few minutes ago about the drought monitor being released here about 20 minutes ago, and it really has not changed. A little bit of the red has shrunk, but not by much here. We only got about an inch of rain in most spots. 
over this past Monday and Tuesday, and it's not going to get much better going into the upcoming week. It, again, it is released every Thursday, so if anyone else is showing you this at like Monday or Tuesday or next week, Thursday is the day that we want to look at it most carefully and compare week to week. And here's why I say it's not going to change all that much. Here's how much rain we're going to get tonight into tomorrow. Half of an inch, two thirds of an inch, maybe. That's pretty much it. And that's not going to put a major dent when you are inch upon inch below where you're supposed to be over the last six calendar months. Now, not just the rain, but the wind. That's really the big story why we're code red. You just saw how much rain we're gonna get, not all that much. The wind though, when you get these lines together, the farther apart the lines are, the more calm the wind is. The closer together they are, the stronger the wind is. Wind gusts up to 55 miles per hour. I have this stopped at 10 a.m. tomorrow. It gives you the idea. Almost all of Middle Tennessee into Southern Kentucky a wind advisory, 6 a.m. until, this is 6 a.m. tomorrow, until midnight tomorrow into Saturday. That is the time frame when we could have broken power poles, tree limbs that are down. A lot of inconveniences, think about it. If we have rain when the kids are going to school, which we will, and we have 55 mile per hour wind gusts when buses are trying to navigate getting the kids home, it's gonna be a long Friday for us. And then the cold air settles in on Sunday into Monday. So we'll keep diving into all the new updates we have as we continue to stay your only live and local news source through nine o'clock this morning. Thank you, Greg. Steer clear traffic right now at 826 and our uh, commute moving strong right now, but a little slow here uh, in this one live look. This is I-65 at Trinity Lane, and if you know Nashville, you know Trinity Lane is already a problem spot. So this one car pulled off to the shoulder can cause an even bigger mess. Now, this is part of your standard slowdown as you come into Nashville, especially north of town. If you wanted to take a detour, you could take Gallatin Pike or Dickerson Pike, uh, Brick Church as good ways to get around this. It looks like that commute up in Hendersonville is finally starting to clear up a little bit, but I want to check on something right here over by the airport, uh, and it looks like we got a little bit of a backup here. So we'll get more info in steer clear traffic in minutes. Coming up. The shelter committee is meeting here in about three minutes. We'll tell you their plans for the winter gearing up for those colder days coming on Monday and Tuesday. You over your account, Wells Fargo. You're watching Fox 17 News This Morning, your code red station. A beautiful looking start to the day. Look at that blue sky as far as the eye can see. But we're in a code red weather alert. Another rain and wind maker moves in overnight tonight and will dominate a good portion of your Friday. The latest coming into the weather center in your code red forecast. Steer clear traffic for you this morning. Quick look here at I-40 at Dawson Pike out near the airport. No problems uh, getting to the airport, but if you're trying to get away from the airport, that's where the slowdown seems to be. We've got the details about that. Thank you for joining us here on Fox 17 News this morning. Lots going on on this Thursday morning. I'm Justin McFarlane. And I'm Jennifer Waddell, Fox 17 News, your only live local news source through 9 a.m. And we know what y'all are talking about right now at the breakfast table with your co-workers, with your friends. Which thing? There's a lot of different things people could be talking about. It's the weather. Okay. That's now, it. most everybody's talking about the snow, but we have a lot to get to before that. So we know weather is top of mind right now. It's the water cooler talk. How much snow are we going to get? When's it coming? But Greg, you're here to tell us about the code red that we got to get through before that. Yeah, this, we're in an interesting situation because any other week, if we had tonight going into tomorrow be the only weather event, you would look at it and go, oh, that doesn't sound good at all. But we're so hyper-focused on, on the snow and possible cold that we cannot discount what's moving in tonight into tomorrow. Wind advisory in effect from 6 a.m. tomorrow until midnight tomorrow into Saturday morning. And it will actually be windier than it was Monday night into Tuesday. So let that sink in. Wind gusts could be up to 55 miles per hour late morning through the early half of the afternoon. Rain will be coming down during the morning drive. Also, the kids go into the bus stop for the first time this week or the last time this week. And also very, very much so like Tuesday, we'll be tracking actively during the morning show as you wake up with us here on Fox 17 News this morning. Wind advisory, what does it mean? Average wind speed of 25 miles per hour to 39 miles per hour. We're gonna be right in that threshold. Gusts, 40 miles per hour to 57 miles per hour. We're going to be right in there as well. Are you going to the Smokies? Maybe you're heading out to Gatlinburg, Sevierville. They have a high wind warning. They're going to have 60 mile per hour plus wind gusts for more than an hour at a time. This is going to be one of those 
24 hour periods, we're getting around for your Friday is going to be tough. We have to watch out for down power lines. Uh, trees could be snapping off branches. They could be uprooted. A lot of the things that we saw Monday night into Tuesday, we could be seeing right in the middle of the day tomorrow. Now, taking a look at future track, it is re racking again for us this hour. Enjoy today. We are sunny right now. We have temperatures that will climb into the 50s. Not much wind for today. You see on your screen, the breeze only about 10 miles per hour. We're going to look at future track for rain and wind coming up in about 10 minutes. Still clear traffic for you this morning. Let's take a quick look at what we're dealing with out there on the roads. This is going to be I-40 at Donaldson Pike. As you make that drive into town this morning, a big slowdown there uh, as you make your way in. Leaving Donaldson Pike, headed towards Briley Parkway there. Uh, the outside lanes seem to be fine. It's those uh, inside lanes that seem to have the problem there as you head towards Briley. So heads up in that area. You can always take Elm Hill Pike or Lebanon Pike. It's the best way to steer clear if you don't want to deal with that. Here is a look at 65 at Trinity Lane on Ooh. the north side. Uh, well, Jen, to be fair, this yeah. is kind of how it always looks there. Yeah. Uh, at 65 at Trinity this time of day. We everybody have on a, that exit ramp. Yeah, it's the exit yeah. Well, People trying to make a decision decision about which way they want to go uh, left or right there when they get to the split and that's what causes the slowdown. You can take Ellington Parkway. If you know which way you want to go um, and that's a good <laughs> way to steer clear. All right, 833 right now in the high cost of homelessness. A homeless committee is meeting later today to talk about how to handle the crisis yeah. here in Nashville and the cold this winter. There is a deep freeze about to happen. Mm -hmm. So Fox 17 News, Peyton Muse, live for us this morning just outside of the City Road Chapel United Methodist Church where that meeting is about to begin. And good morning, guys. So the meeting actually should have just started. It started at 8. 30. But one of the things that they plan on talking about is the cold weather shelter and how they're already on track, especially looking ahead to Monday and Tuesday's cold winter snap. And some of the other things that they're going to that they're planning on talking about is the revised encampment plan, which the committee says that they're on track for. And as we've reported, the Hermitage homeless encampment, that's closing soon. It's the most uh, recent camp closure announcement. And the Office of Homeless Services says that those are, that are experiencing, who are experiencing homelessness in that encampment should have their housing arrangements chosen by the end of this month. And some of the notes from the committee's agenda says that their inflow and outflow issues seem to be off track along with gathering documentation for the people that are experiencing homelessness. And once since this meeting has already started, we're going to go in there. We're going to hear what they have to say, ask them a little bit more about the cold shelter, along with some of the items that they have listed off track and see their plan to move and push those things forward. Reporting live in Madison, Peyton Muse, Fox 17 News, Dakota Station. Peyton, thank you very much. 835 right now, and we have a project on I-65 in one of our booming suburbs yes. that is now delayed. We go south of Nashville down to Murray County and Spring Hill, where the Buckner Road interchange is now at least a year behind schedule. Now, TDOT leaders say that the interchange will not be opening up to drivers until later this spring. Fox 17 News' Karen Aguilar joins us live from down there in Murray County to try to explain, Karen, what is going on. Yeah, well, I'm here on Jim Warren Road, and I'm actually going to walk over here and I'm going to show you where the I-65 interchange is. And as you can see, there are a couple cars, but it is expected to get busier during peak times. And I just want to kind of explain a little bit about why this is important. Congestion. It's basically people that are just trying to have an easier time to get to work, to drop their kids off to school, to daycare, and with it being delayed, it's making things a lot harder. Now, Buckner Road, which is actually a few miles down and on a different road, um, the TDOT is trying to connect the I-65, make it diverge to Buckner Road to make it easier. That's part of the project. Now, TDOT tells me, well, the spokesperson with TDOT tells me that part of the delays are because they don't have additional resources to finish the job. Now, again, Jen, as you mentioned, the interstate is expected to be finished in the spring, but I guess we'll just have to wait on that. Reporting live in Spring Hills, Karen Aguilar, Fox 17 News, your Code Red station. Karen, thank you. At 837, turns out a lot of people who fly through Nashville don't know the rules when it comes to 
bringing a gun on a plane. We'll tell you where mm. Nashville's airport is ranking on the list of guns confiscated at security. And brace yourself for the cold that is coming in. We're going to tell you about the Arctic blast that's getting ready to hit Middle Tennessee over the next few days. Greg Bobas will have the details as you brace yourself and your home and your pipes and your pets <laughs> and the people for the cold. When you stop paying rent, he started to. 8.40 is the time and new information this morning as the detection of firearms at the nation's security checkpoints at the airports are now at an all-time high. In 2023, airport security agents were able to confiscate more than 67 hundred guns across the country. This is a brand new all-time record for the TSA. Now listen to this. The TSA says that 93% of those guns were loaded. Now on top of the list was the Atlanta International Airport down there, Hartsville Jackson. They found 451 firearms there at that particular airport, but Nashville International ranked fifth on the list. You can see it right there at number five. They found 188 guns at BNA. They want to remind everyone there are rules to follow. You cannot have that gun with you in that carry-on. All right, well, let's talk about the weather forecast out there. Uh, Greg Bob is uh, taking a little bit of a break here so we can give you that weekend outlook out there right now. Uh, a dry Saturday in store for you, uh, but then the snow is going to begin late on Sunday, and then the Arctic air <laughs> arrives shortly after that. Uh, that's when things really get interesting. And when we say Arctic, we mean really low single digits single digits five degrees uh, could be the low as we get into monday so uh, preparations should begin now to make sure you protect everyone and everything that you can uh, between now and that time um, i also would encourage you to do a, a little something here we do this in our house we make and keep in our car what we like to call blessing bags uh, these are, you know, gallon size Ziploc bags that you can give to people who might not have a place to stay. Perhaps you see them at your local intersection and they're homeless. Things that would have hot hands, socks, gloves, hats uh, to give to those who might be in need and in the cold. So uh, right now, let's get to check the uh, steer clear traffic with Justin. He's on standby now. All right, steer clear traffic for you this morning. Uh, we have got a couple of things. Uh, let's get to 65 at Trinity on the north side there. You can see uh, where the traffic there is uh, doing just OK, starting to loosen up a little bit. The same can be said for traffic uh, in other parts of town, but your overall drive times look like this. 47 minutes coming down from Hendersonville, still just over an hour from Murfreesboro, 40 minutes coming in from Franklin. Speaking of Hendersonville, we've got an update now on a story that we had been reporting on uh, looking into last year even. Fox 17 News has learned from TDOT they now do not plan to widen Vietnam Veterans Boulevard in Hendersonville. Sumner County was part of a, a study that was paid for by TDOT to look into expanding that road because of congestion. Well, TDOT has now confirmed to us that Sumner County is not part of their 10 year plan, meaning that construction that was supposed to start this year on the bypass in Hendersonville now will not happen. We've got the full story now at Fox17.com if you'd like to read that uh, full master plan. You know how they say you can't fight City Hall? Well, don't tell that to food truck operators here in Middle Tennessee. And never say that in front of the Beacon Center of Tennessee. Fighting City Hall, next. Toughness, strength. Good morning, Tim. Right now it's 8.45 and taking a look here at the thing, at the one reason why we are in a code red weather alert for tonight into tomorrow. We have high wind that's going to move in for us here. The areas that are shaded and the brown that have the very close together white lines are going to see wind gusts upwards of 50 to 55 miles per hour between 10 a.m and 2 p.m. This moves through right in the middle of the afternoon. That's after we get rain in the morning. 3 a.m. through about noon, we're going to have rain coming down. That means during your morning drive and while the kids are at the bus stop. And then maybe getting a nice cup of milk later on this afternoon. Enjoy your day. 48 degrees. 
52 at noon, 53 at 1 p.m. Overall, the forecast is going to be the nicest. It's going to be for the next 10 days today. This is the next weather maker that moves in. We do have some snow that tracks in from the north and west. We don't know totals yet. It's far too soon, but Monday, waking up to snowflakes flying. We'll continue to monitor this as we go throughout the weekend. Sir, clear traffic for you this morning. Let's get a quick look here on the east side. As you make that drive over there, you can see traffic is moving along very, very well after some minor delays here. Once people figure out where they want to go, they can actually go there. It's just figuring out the splits is the big problem. Uh, that's I-24 near Harding Place. As you make that drive uh, coming in from the south and east side, a bit of a slowdown as people approach Harding Place. You can always take Antioch Pike or Murfreesboro Road to steer clear. The city of Mount Juliet taxed out of town food trucks to the tune of $100 a day to come into Mount Juliet and run their business. Mm -hmm. A tax so overwhelming it was keeping all of those out of town food trucks out of the city. But the not for profit Beacon Center decided to fight back on their behalf and take Mount Juliet to court. And by the way, the Beacon Center has never lost a court case. And as Fox 17 News Dennis Ferrier shows us in this Fox 17 News investigation story, their undefeated record still stands. The lawsuit accuses Mount Juliet of unconstitutionally stopping food trucks from making a living in that city. Apparently, Mount Juliet knew it had a problem because it changed the law before the lawsuit saw a single minute in court. This is Giovanna the brightly colored school bus turned food truck from East Nashville's David Yarzagray. I took a trip to Colombia, visited my grandmother down there, and I just got a lot of inspiration. I was wanting to start a business, and I was inspired by the food, the art, the culture, and it kind of coalesced with my love of making food. We decided to start a food truck that just kind of celebrated Colombia. Light, airy, and crisp empanadas with some really unusual fillings. The food truck debuted during COVID all over the mid-state in subdivisions just like this. One of those places, Mount Juliet. But when the COVID crisis ended, so did the welcome. Mount Juliet decided to charge food trucks outside of Mount Juliet with a $100 a day permitting fee. Just so you know, most cities charge $100 to $150 a year for a food truck license. We feel that that's, that's fair and we don't have any problem paying that. But $100 a shift is really difficult for the economics. We might make four, or 600 bucks tonight. It's not like we're making a ton of money, right, in, in, in our total revenue. So if you pay 100 bucks, that's the whole margin. It might be more than that, right? It becomes unprofitable. That's when the Beacon Center of Tennessee jumped in and sued Mount Juliet on behalf of the food trucks for nothing less than a constitutional violation. When Fall, lead counsel for the Beacon Center. It crossed the line because the Constitution protects individuals against discriminatory government actions. And here, uh, they were not just treating out-of-city food trucks differently, they were treating them vastly differently. Let's be honest, sometimes cities get away with these kinds of ordinances because what small business has the resources for a long legal battle with City Hall? Without the Beacon Center and without their resources, there is no way we would have even considered uh, legal action, right? Because we can't afford it. It's not even in the realm of possibility for us. The Beacon Center is a free market public policy think tank that backs up its policies and beliefs with legal action, representing Tennesseans for free when they feel small business people or citizens are being treated unfairly by government using unconstitutional rules, regulations, or laws. Let businesses operate, let businesses earn a living, let consumers decide uh, which businesses they want to go to. It's not the government's job to pick winners and losers. It's the consumer's job to decide where they want to eat. The Beacon Center immediately recognizes unconstitutional law, and that's why they go out and they win lawsuit. And they're all wildly different, you know, hair braiding, sidewalks, food trucks. They're winning all these suits, but they're all really similar in the sense, although they sound very different, in that they're unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. And when they come in, they have a clear vision of that law and what's constitutional and what's not, and that's why they always win. And this food truck, you know, to, to come in $100 a day when places like Brentwood and Nolansville and are a hundred dollars a year and, sure right goodlettsville yeah that's a big difference well, it's a big difference you understand you have yeah, to pay right, because right. you know they need a tax base yeah. you can't come in with your portable restaurant and not 
you know, help in some manner, but and $100 the, a day? And the city has reverse course. They reverse course. They, they eliminated it from the books. I mean, they just took it off. Okay. They don't even want to spend a day in court on it. I'm sure their lawyers told them it was unconstitutional, so they ended it. Dennis, thank you for that report. Yeah, we do appreciate you. Right now at 851, we are going to get a final check of your forecast, plus a wrap up of today's top headlines in minutes. So you need a roof? Well, Here's a recap of our top stories here on this Thursday morning. We begin with a fire that happened in Springfield overnight. Thanks to Smoky Barn News, we've got some details and some video for you. Six people and six pets managed to get out safely. Again, this was in Springfield overnight. Yeah, that's according to Smoky Barn News. You see the images right there and the side of the house that's really burned happened on Timberlake Drive around 10 o'clock last night. Smoky Barn News says that Firefighters at the scene are talking about the fact that the fire broke out in the garage of the home, then spread into the kitchen. They say that the home is not livable right now because of the fire and the smoke and water damage caused. In Nashville, Metro Police are on the hunt for a rideshare driver who was accused mm. of robbing two women at gunpoint over the weekend. Police tell us that the man here behind us is 44 year old Myron Hughes was driving those two women 22 and 24. So young women from downtown Nashville to Nolansville when police say he showed a gun and demanded those women get out of the car and leave everything they had behind. Now, uh, Hughes is currently under investigation for this. If you know where he might be, you're asked to call the Nashville Crime Stompers. Well, Fox 17 News is also working to gather more information after one person is critically injured in a shooting that happened in Antioch. Happened around 7 o'clock last night on Schoolhouse Court. Police say there is currently no one in custody. Of course, we'll keep you up to date both on air and online as more information comes out. And now a final check of that forecast with Code Red meteorologist Greg Bobas as we get ready for tonight and tomorrow. Let's take a little time here because okay. look at your screen. All right. There's Let's a little bit of everything. Today's going to be perfect. Sunny this afternoon, 57 degrees. Tonight, only down to 43. When you're waking up with us at 4 o'clock in the morning tomorrow, rain begins to start moving into our western counties. That rain is going to pick up primarily between 7 o'clock and 9 o'clock, right when kids are at the bus stops, right when we're getting the morning commute going, and the wind will also be picking up. You see it's a code red day on Friday. That is for the wind. Earlier this week, we had wind gusts of 45 to 50 miles per hour overnight. This is going to be during the daytime hours of your Friday. Think 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. Get stuff inside. If you did not do that last time, patio furniture, garbage yeah. cans, the wind's going to come while a lot of us are actually at work. You know, and Greg, if I heard you correctly, did you say gusting up to 55 miles an hour? Yes. Wouldn't that technically make it worse than what we saw earlier this week? You're right, exactly. Yeah. The wind will be stronger than it was earlier this week, and then wow. the big cold spell. We'll be back with you tomorrow morning to keep breaking it down. Got it. All right. America steals and deals right now. Not unlike hotels, boarding facilities tend to fill up quickly, especially during the holidays. The other reason to book in advance is to make sure that your pet is in compliance with any vaccination or other requirements that the facility might mandate. In fact, some vaccines need to be boosted before they are considered effective, and that might mean that it'll be a few weeks before your pet is actually eligible for boarding. So when in 